everybody, welcome back to Hit Point, a JRPG news show, an anime news show, a niche news show, basically anything that either Baku and I find interesting or, or uh, find it deep into the bowels of our souls that we've got to talk about it, we're going to talk about it today. And guys, we got some stuff to talk about it. We got some stuff. Oh, it's... <laughs> Am I ready for it? I don't know. I hope so, because I I know I'm not either. We are not streaming at our usual time. Normally, we stream this every uh, Wednesday at... No, no, no. What? Sunday. <laughs> we stream every Sunday at, at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we... Oh, oh, Baku, are you muted? No, well, you can hear me, so it's that's on you. <laughs> there we go. That's my bad. I don't know how Hello. that happened, but mm. uh, can 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 y'all hear me now? Am I am I am I still silenced by the Derek? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> there we go. Okay, great. Thank you. This, All right. This is why we got to do the post. Oh, no, no, the the pre check. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah. We we should do Hello. our Hello. our pre show stream and everything. Anyways, yeah, I think I think. Baku's still a little bit low. I'll have to figure that out later. Uh, so tonight okay. he's just going to be a little bit quiet. Maybe I'll 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 bump <laughs> myself down a little bit just to make sure that we're on the same level. Oh, can you bump me up in Discord? You think? Uh, no, it's actually not going through Discord today. I'm doing oh. it through Video Ninja instead. So oh. so maybe we'll have uh, fixed a little bit of our uh, uh, audio issues that we had earlier. So oh. maybe, but at the cost of Baku maybe being a little bit quieter. I I don't know. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully that's not too much of a, of a disparity there. Is but it like super quiet? I mean, I can, I can turn myself up a little bit. How's, how's, how's that? Uh, am, that am I louder for you? That looks fine to me. Okay. Well, you, you guys let me know if that was louder, loud enough. Yeah. I, I just get added a little bunch of gain. Okay. Anyways. Hey everybody. <laughs> Sorry for oh, the, that help. Uh, this it's is good now. Okay. Great. The most professional, uh, a podcast on all of uh, of YouTube. Uh, as you can probably tell, Baku and I are slightly out of practice. <laughs> Normally we stream every Sunday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, no, not Pacific, Eastern time. Yeah, Eastern time. Yes. <laughs> Eastern time. Se 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Yeah. Well, we're going to yeah. talk about rumors. We're going to talk about, uh, well, everything really uh some industry everything. news will preview some trailers my god do we have some trailers this week oh boy, <sighs> we have trailers we have a lot of trailers we have a lot <laughs> of good things to go okay All so right. you know what ended up happening derek is that uh, there were a whole bunch of games that were announced yeah. right before but they mm -hmm. were all like for japan only and i'm just like yeah i'm not going to talk about it until they're ready for westward uh you know uh release yeah. and then all of a sudden this past week just a whole bunch of them I'm like oh by the way they're they're just ready for westward release so now we can talk about it yeah because yeah, it, it was no point for me to talk about it when most of our audience uh well i'm sure some of you guys play like import you just get it from japan you can read the moon runes as Derek like to call them but most of us don't and we wait for the translation we wait for the international release and a whole bunch of them just got released so look forward to that oh man baku yeah. by the way what were we doing last week because we didn't stream last week we didn't do anything last week that's right we sure didn't <laughs> i was in new york you were in new york uh, and yeah mm -hmm. i was in new york and i was at the uh joe hisaishi uh ghibli studio uh concert uh and i think uh, I, I didn't I didn't know it was possible for a whole room of people to simultaneously cry to classical music oh. because they were just it was it, it was an emotional experience. It was just like what happened? It was like nostalgia plus like, you know how like sometimes you listen to like really good music, you just get that goosebump. And oh, then yeah. Like you're, you're just tearing up. It's that plus the nostalgia plus the fact that a legend is playing live in front of you and he's like in his 70s and he's probably never come gonna come back again and the, the moment that all that hits you at once is like it was just the most phenomenal thing i've seen ever and yes i've been to distant war i've seen a final fantasy concert uh but this this is like next level stuff so wow <laughs> oh that's awesome to hear yeah. man um 
so that's why we weren't streaming uh, the Hit Point podcast last week. Baku was uh, a little bit further away from his microphone than usual. Um, <laughs> just a little bit. And uh, and I didn't really want to carry the show on my own, uh, just because it would it wouldn't feel right to do the show without Baku, and I don't think not he'd that, want to do the show without me. Not that he couldn't. Me. Not that he couldn't do it. I mean, you did. I think you had the docket pretty much ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> there was no docket last week. He lied to you. No, actually, you know what's funny is that uh, there weren't a whole lot of news last week. I mean, look, uh, you you guys can check the news last week. It was like, eh, it was pretty minimal. It, yeah, it was extremely minimal. There were like two games that I would have talked about and basically no news. Yeah, uh, it, it was crazy. And it actually worked out really well for us. That's true. Now, if <laughs> yeah. you if you showed up here on Sunday expecting us, uh, I apologize. But I, I think we put out a, a, a line on Twitter just letting everybody know. Uh, and that's generally going to be where I send out the notifications of delays and stuff. So if you're not following Baku or I on Twitter, uh, you might want to do so because unfortunately through YouTube, there's not really a, a reliable way to send out a message or notification to everybody. Mm -hmm. So Twitter is basically just kind of where I go because that's just what I have access to because I'm not putting it on Facebook or anywhere else because, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just not not where I am. But uh, anyways... So with all of that out of the way, Baku, what have you, uh, I guess, what have you been up to lately? Have you, I, I want to get caught up. This is the first uh. time I talked to you in like a couple of weeks. <laughs> how, how's, uh, how, how's your, your YouTube channel going? Uh, not, not so good because not because people weren't supportive, uh, but I just haven't had time to make any videos whatsoever, uh, yeah. between going on a trip to just starting this new job, which I just started today. Today is my first day. Congratulations uh, on have, the new job. Thank you. Thank That's you. Awesome. Yeah, I still have a whole bunch of documents that I, I need to look through and fill and sign. So, yeah, um, I'm not even going to stream today because I'm just going to do this for you all. And then I'm going to go off and like read a bunch of documents. Okay. Um, that, that's, yeah, that's going to be my day. Uh, but, wow. uh, yeah, I think we'll be doing more videos. I'm going to be finishing up persona Four golden. Finally. I know you guys have been hearing me talking about playing this <laughs> thing for like two months. Uh, mm -hmm. it's just, it's not that only the game is long, but also I just haven't been streaming at all. So speaking of not streaming, uh, Derek, what have you been doing? <laughs> all right. So I, I also have not been streaming, but I, I did th uh, throw out an impressions video for Blossom Tales 2, which is uh, a pretty interesting Zelda like, which I would recommend you check out if you're into like the 2D Zeldas. It's uh, a nice little indie RPG. And uh, yeah, yeah, maybe check out my video on it. It's pretty yeah, cool. Maybe it's worth mm, worth, worth checking out. I have another one that I'm hoping to put out this week if all goes well. Uh, I can't talk about it yet because it's uh, under uh, NDA as of right now. You know, mm. under embargo. But um, uh, who knows? It could be any game. Uh, so I will. I will cop to something though, and that's that. Last night when I was planning on streaming, um, there there was there was an issue where um, so so yesterday. Yesterday morning was my birthday party uh, with my oh. uh, with my, my Amy's grandfather and and her side of the family and stuff and and then when we got home I'm like I'm gonna play some more of this whatever this game is yeah. um, <laughs> and then you know fast forward a while later and I look up and it's after seven o'clock I have <laughs> missed messages from Baku <laughs> and I realize that it's Sunday and I I I completely I, that was my bad. <laughs> Uh, I got I got so caught up in a in a game for the first time in a long time, uh, yeah that that I completely hosed the show and I'm sorry about that guys that's that is on me that time that's definitely on me, um so I I apologize to Baku because I feel like he was looking for me and I was just MIA. <laughs> That's my frantically baby. for like a whole hour. <laughs> Actually, sorry. more than an hour, more than an hour, because I usually okay. You guys don't know this, but I usually would message like Derek right around five p.m. the day of and be like, okay, the doc is done. Go do your thumbnail, right? And mm -hmm. then uh, he usually respond within like 10, 15 minutes max. I know. And it was like half an hour. I'm like, hmm, okay, <laughs> well, maybe maybe he's busy. I don't know. Maybe he's busy. And then I was like, hey, so we're still meeting up around like, you know, half an hour before to do our uh, sound sound check or what have you. Mm -hmm. And then no response. I'm like, OK, hmm. 
yeah. he like get run over or something? Did he get into like an like an accident? Like it was it's not like him to not respond at all. But no, this man was playing some game and some, he was just like some super indeterminate yeah. game. Uh, and uh, nobody you the world may never know what game I was playing that I got so wrapped up in that for the first time ever I lost track of time as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um like you can keep an eye out for a, a video coming out later this week talking about that game and probably a little bit of this experience as well. Mm. Anyways, that that is I think all of the catching up that that personally Baku and I have to do. So let's go ahead and yes. uh dive into the actual news, what the people are actually here for. Baku, yeah. what is today's leading headline? Uh Yoshi P thinks Final Fantasy is struggling. Hmm. Oh, what? Cool. Anyway, so we'll about talk it. about that in a little bit. <laughs> but yeah. before we do, we have some comments to catch up with from the last, not last week's episode, but the week before last uh, episode. Yes. So let's kick that off. All right. We've got a comment from Rain Time. It says, uh, Derek's got to play like a dragon. You isn't, know why when he finally does. Isn't that Rhine Time, though, from... Uh, like, Rhine, oh, no, sorry, Rhine Time, not Rain Time. Rhine, yeah. Rhine, Rhine Time. It's Rhine, Rhine time. time. Rhine yeah. time. From yes. uh, from Xenoblade, right? That's from Xenoblade. Oh yeah. wait, did you play in English or did you play in Japanese? I right? played in Japanese. That's why. <laughs> okay, so that's why it probably didn't ring any bells. Because no, not at all. Because <laughs> Rhine, the English VA had that that played constantly. Whenever it was like, oh, he yeah. was gonna do a special. He's like, it's Rhine time. And anyways, so yeah, every every time, and I kept having people tell me, oh, you're missing out, and I'm like, I know, I get it, <laughs> but I'm gonna miss out. <laughs> One way or another, so I'm I'm going to play the thing that most people don't play, right? Like I I know a lot of people play it in English, I, and I get how amazing it is. I've seen it played through other people's channels, so I, I get that. Um, but no, my my thing is I'll play in Japanese because I like the original script. Uh, oh or sure, at least I I like to hear. The how, how dare script. you play in the original yeah, how, how dare Japanese? You play how dare anyone play in any other language? God. <laughs> so, so yes, I I should play like a dragon. I mean, it looks like it's right up my alley. I'm just, um, I'm I'm staring at my backlog right over here. I I moved my camera. I don't know if was this your last episode. I don't think it was. I, I'm I'm completely switched around. So now I can actually see yeah. my backlog staring at me in the face. Oh no! Like a dragon's in there. I know it. I'll get it's to it there. at some point. So we got it's... another one from uh. Tom yeah. R here who says, oh my God, I was shocked by that Kroenvin shout out. I was literally at their concert in Toronto last Tuesday. Hey. They were amazing. Your taste in music is as good as your taste in RPGs. Wow. Well, wow. Well, wow. Well. High praises. <laughs> oh, High man. praises. Oh, well, thank guy. you so much, Tom. Uh, so yeah, that, that band for anybody who isn't uh, familiar is like a, a the way that they were described to me for the first time was uh, by the record lady store, uh, the, 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 I'm sorry, the record store owner lady. Uh, she described them to me as if Quentin Tarantino had like put out a movie and this was the soundtrack, but that movie doesn't exist, but this is the soundtrack to it. <laughs> and I was like, that tracks. It's funky and it's like disco-y and sort of mm -hmm. like desert bluesy. It's it's so cool. So yeah, check them out if you guys get a chance. Krungbind. K-H-R-U-A-N-G-B-I-N. Oh, yep. Krungbind. You might want to type that out to people. I'll throw it in chat, sure. I cannot. I just... Okay, well, <laughs> while you do that, uh, we've got a we've got a comment from Demographic Graphics. Hello. Uh kind of long, but bear with me. Great discussion and news rundown as always. A thought occurred to me when you were talking about the Tactics Ogre Reborn trailer, specifically with regards to how the voice lines were presented. I generally find out, uh, well, I find the out of context dramatic lines <clears throat> in many JRPG trailers to sound a little off, but at the same time, I understand why, uh, why, why they want to present the voice acting somehow. Uh, I think there must be a better way to do it. I don't know what that would be. Do you guys have any thoughts on how to put together a JRPG trailers in ways that better present the voice acting in the game? Okay, all of that really just to get to that last bit. So Derek, yeah. I don't know. What were what was like um maybe a more recent like trailer that you've seen that just really 
like capture your attention that made you go like wow this is it i really need this in my life uh, you know preferably with voice acting i don't know uh i mean mm-hmm. the i mean the last trailers that i've seen have uh, like that that have really struck a chord with me mm-hmm. haven't had any voice acting like mm-hmm. japanese or otherwise Fair. A lot mm-hmm. of those indie RPGs just don't have it, and that's fine. That's fair, uh, yeah. But if I wanted to showcase the the voice acting of an RPG, if I were in charge of the trailer, for instance, mm-hmm. um, you know, if if I were doing my own edit, <laughs> I would probably start with like the very opening sequence of the game where maybe the protagonist is talking. You know, like because mm. then it's not even a spoiler, right? And you can kind of hear mm-hmm. them like these were the lines that were designed to be the introduction to the character themselves. Um, yeah. And maybe you could skip ahead and like play a, a voice from another character, like as they introduce themselves or something, you know, mm-hmm. and, and maybe a clip from like the middle of like a, a combat where they're like shouting out attack names or something. I don't know exactly how mm. I do it, but something that doesn't give too much context to be spoilery, but uh, the other option would be to have the voice actors involved, maybe like, do something extra just for the trailer where they like, you know, you know, like if it was, if it was going to be like Lloyd Bannings from, uh, from trails, uh, trails, uh, from zero or yeah. Mm -hmm. Trails from zero. He's like, my name's Lloyd Bannings and I want to be a detective like my older brother, you know, or something like that. Like something kind of that introduces the character to, you know, to the player or to the viewer, you know, and mm-hmm. and kind of gives them a, a semblance of like, oh, yeah, so it has this kind of voice acting. And it's not like really weird out of context, like super dramatic overacting sounding stuff, right? Like, I don't oh, know. my God. You know, what's funny that you mentioned that because and, and I didn't I didn't put this in the news, but we can talk a little bit about it because I, I don't know if this is like really newsworthy or not. But recently uh, for so Square Enix just released okay. this like a very quippy trailer for mm-hmm. Forspoken. And oh my people's god! People's reactions yeah. were not <laughs> right. So when you're saying like, I remember extra seeing the trailer. Line, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so let me read this. Um, I, I guess in in a way that I I think is supposed to be read. Um, so let me get this straight. I'm somewhere that's not where I would call Earth. I'm seeing freaking dragons. Oh and oh yeah, I'm I'm talking to a cup. Yeah. Okay, that's something I do now. I do magic, kill jacked up beasts. I will probably fly next. Uh, yeah, that those are the extra lines that <laughs> were those the extra lines you were referring to. <laughs> oh my gosh, I yeah, would probably it do was, things it a little bit it differently. Was it, was it was, it was a really rough, uh, and I feel like part of the problem with that is that it's like they're trying to portray with that specifically, they're trying to portray somebody who's very like uh above it all, kind of like trying to be. Mm. I, I was, it was somebody referred to it as being like Whedon esque. You know, trying to be like kind of uh, right? Joss Whedon, Joss Whedon, uh, yeah, kind of writing, <laughs> writing, and it's like, yes, very irreverent, which is like, okay, sure, it works in like a Marvel movie or something, but like, mm-hmm. yeah. this is in a fantasy setting, JRPG action, like adventure RPG, like the the whole like, the whole issue is like, if the character in the game doesn't have any sort of like sense of awe or wonder or whatever as they're like experiencing the world like if mm-hmm. they're not like surprised by this then it just makes the player feel less like there's any sense of <laughs> awe or wonder or discovery like like that's that they are your vessel through which you experience the game right so if if the player is just like oh my god where am i, I guess i'm in a fantasy <laughs> setting time to kill a dragon i guess cuz that's what i do <laughs> like it's like it's the the problem isn't like the voice acting or even the attitude it's just like Mm -hmm. it's just counterproductive in what rpgs aim to instill in the player i think yeah you know i i I don't know who uh whedon joss is okay like for anyone who does not know i i'm not like big in pop culture but what i what i do hear in this like trailer this like voice i just hear like like an only like something very like I don't know, something very like amateur, something very um not amateur, but like juvenile. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Something about this juvenile makes and me irreverent not... and yeah, I, and I can't jaded? take this seriously. Yeah. Yeah. So let me get this straight. I'm sitting in my basement 
okay i'm seeing mr derek i'm talking about grpg yeah okay that's something i do now i i do podcasts <laughs> what i will probably make youtube videos next i don't know hmm. oh, man yeah I maybe i wouldn't count on that <laughs> But no, uh, I yeah. feel like that's kind of what I would do is <laughs> is try to use out of con like things that don't provide too much context, but maybe like a little like um like a, a demo reel almost of the voice acting involved. I think that's probably what I would do to try to mm. show him like, yeah, that's you know enough to get him interested and and kind of invested in some of the character, but not like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like the thing is, so we're talking about the Tactics Ogre trailer, and my complaint was it was just shouting lines, just yeah. random freaking lines, no context whatsoever from like a traumatic um, or or like a uh, climactic yeah. moment well, of the game, right? It's right, and and it it there's no it's ramp up. Like, yeah, I I don't know what this is about. Why do I care? I I think that's the biggest question. Whenever you do any kind of media, any kind of media, book, game, video, you name it, just anything that anyone consumes is why do I care? And mm -hmm. I I don't. And and I played this game. <laughs> I love this game, and I still don't know why I would care about these lines being shouted at me. It's like please stop yelling. I know. Like I. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, to to answer graphics question, yeah, just like may maybe give them give people reasons to care. I think that would be the, the my my go to for picking lines. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have we have a voicemail. We actually have three, but I'm and <gasps> we I have and, three. But we're not playing all three today. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna pace ourselves. Okay. Oh. Okay. So if you like, would like to have your voicemail played on the air, you can do so on the air, on the internet. You can do so by leaving us a voicemail at 785-337-3805, but this is the one we have today. All right. Hi, Super Derek and Baku-san. I wanted to tell Super Derek about a cool album called Living in Darkness by Indoor Creature, as well as tell you that I finished off uh, Chrono Cross and Radical Dreamers, and I'm planning on moving on to a cool horror RPG that's coming out on the 16th called Frail Hearts vs. Cory Domley. And, and if I had to ask a question... It would be, who is your favorite character in Chrono Cross character-wise? Uh, uh, who is your favorite party member character-wise, excluding uh, excluding Harley, Kid, and or Fargo? Okay. Goodbye. All right. Goodbye. So, uh, let's see. Favorite characters in Chrono Cross, uh, including and, ex and excluding playable characters, was that? Okay. Um, what was his name again? By the way, I I just I I, didn't, I think I missed it. I think I might have missed it too. Let me double check. In the meantime, you can go ahead and play. Uh, who is your favorite character? What, uh, from Chrono Cross? You asking me about Chrono Cross? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> favorite character? It's one of Baku's favorite games. Oh it's, yeah, it's actually that's... it's actually not one of Baku's favorite games. I won't make you pick a favorite character. I suppose. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's so easy to go with like. Like to go with uh, like Guile or somebody who's like, you know, supposed to be sort of like a nod to Magus. Started out as Magus, you know, like that. He he was okay, but oh, oh, God, but, that hurts. It hurts so much. I Just know. hearing you describe him hurts me. It's supposed to be, but like not really. But it's alluding to it, but not really. It's like yeah. So it's, it's, instead, with the game. <laughs> so instead. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. I got to go with Glenn, who is super cool character. He has, mm -hmm. you know, the the all all of the makings of like a, a a possible like main protagonist for the game. But, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that he's so hard to get unless you're like following a guide because you have to make some mm -hmm. counterintuitive decisions to get him. But mm -hmm. he does feel like a, a super well-developed character and uh, he's got some really cool weapons at you know toward the end game makes him who is this again glenn glenn yeah yeah he was uh oh yeah i totally didn't get him oh you didn't i i i know for a fact that i mean look first of all i was playing in japanese like import like oh, yeah. straight from japan when it came out okay and, and and so it's not even my first language already and all these choices are counterintuitive yeah definitely did not get them <laughs> <laughs> no way I played without guide. There, there was no guide back then. So you ended up getting the the, the kid with the fishing pole and the uh, <sighs> probably, and which the... made me hate the mm -hmm. game that much more. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. God, like, please, get, kids, stay home, please. Like, I, I want all their, <laughs> I want all their kids uh, from JRPG to stay home. Like, Hope, stay home. Uh, oh. Ken from P3, stay home. Fishing pole kit, stay home. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Just do not come along. Oh, man. So anyways, yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, I think Glenn was uh, was my favorite character. And besides him, I thought Radius was also really cool, uh, mm -hmm. who's the the older man who has a, a cane that he uses kind of like a, he, he has the, these special attacks that are kind of like uh, old samurai flicks where he like, he like attacks with it. And then like, as he puts the, the cane away, like he sheathes it uh, in his like belt mm. buckle or whatever. And then as he does, so the enemy behind him like collapses. It's like, yeah, oh, it's super cool. like, Oh, samurai flicks, man. Those yeah. are awesome. Yeah. He's yeah. like an old retired samurai. Like that, that's, that is his, <laughs> uh, that is his trope. And I love it. So can, can I, can I pick a character anyway? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pick a character anyway. Okay. Despite, okay. despite my displeasure. Okay. To say the least. Uh, I'm going to pick kid because I, I have such high hope for kid. Kid is it, it, awesome. She was actually my very first, uh, uh, video game crush. When I was like 14, I was playing Chrono Cross <laughs> for the first time and she looked about like 15, 16. I was like, She's she's really cute. not Renoa. Renoa wasn't your first. Renoa's everybody first crush. Excuse me. Renoa. What what game was she in? Yeah. Final Fantasy VIII. Right. Yeah, I never played that. What? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wow, wow. I I would really like to hear what you think about Final Fantasy VIII. I mean, I, I, I could hmm. give it a go at some point, uh, but I have to go through the rest of my yeah, my stare, backlog. Stare at your backlog again. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What? yeah um no well, i i just there. think yeah i just think kid um and, and i'm gonna say the most non-spoilery possible i just feel like she was like shafted and it just just because she played a game was she squall's you, you'll love interest it. well not not because wait wait hold on what no no i'm talking about kid oh not okay Renoa. okay sorry yeah okay yeah no kid kid was just kind of shafted by the game and i i just i feel for her in 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 more ways than 50 so mm -hmm. maybe that's the reason why i'm picking her uh i mean i like her as a character uh she's spunky you know i i kind of like that uh mm -hmm. it, it kind of works with the story again no spoilers uh but if you knew the story is kind of like huh okay that's interesting why she behaves that way yeah. Um, so I, I thought it was it was good. Like she she's one of the better written character. Um, and I just wish that she had a better um, outcome. Let's just say that. Gotcha. All okay. right. So if you have a voicemail that you want to leave us and we'll talk about it, you can do so at 785-337-3805 if you have any burning questions. Uh, though, I will also say that you can also leave us a super chat and we'll also be responding to those toward the end of the show. Uh, and, and yeah, we'll respond to all of those. So if you have burning questions that cannot wait for a voicemail to be played, uh, you can throw those into the chat. So <laughs> that for real is all the catching up that we need to do before we dive into, Yay! into some news. Let's get into it with <laughs> some delays because everyone likes delays. Uh, there you go. You play <laughs> Nasa. <laughs> delays. All right, let's start. Let's start with delays. Uh, River City Girls 2. I know it hurts. Uh, Wayfarer announced in a tweet that a highly anticipated beat em up game, River City Girls 2, will be delayed to some unknown dates. Uh, River City Girls 2 was previously announced to be released summer 2022, which is like now. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of kind of uh, yeah. late to the delay. It's, it's kind of like me saying today. <laughs> it's kind of like me saying today, guys, we're not going to have a show yesterday. <laughs> kind of kind of closing the barn doors after the cows have already escaped right Derek so. I didn't know that you work for way forward I wow so that's what you were doing yesterday how did you know <laughs> sending out that tweet like really late <laughs> yeah unfortunately there is no uh there's no uh, uh new release date or really any reason behind it other than they just want to you know make it a really good game and I, you know what? I'll stand is always take your time, make a good game, come out when you're ready. Just don't cancel it, please. Just I, I, when it, they cancel a game, it just hurts me a little bit. 
Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of development hours. There's a lot of death. A lot. They put their heart and soul into it and it just gets delayed. I mean, it just gets canceled. Like, it, mm-hmm. it kind of hurts. It kind of hurts yeah. when I think about it. But yeah, hopefully it will be a great game. The first game had uh, amazing reviews. So we're looking forward to the second one. That's right. And right. also, uh, speaking of other delays, we have Metal Slug Tactics, which, uh, believe it or not, has been delayed. Publisher right, delay. Daddy <laughs> have announced that the Metal Slug Tactics games will be delayed to 2023. No reasons were cited other than the team just needing more time to make it as uh, as explosive as possible upon release. And I think you that go. totally makes sense. You don't they don't need to apologize. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> not even not even like I was waiting on them or anything. Yeah, we, we have so many <laughs> games to play. Please take your time. I know, I, seriously. No, seriously, just take your time. We have a lot of games. We're fine. All right. Well, moving away from delays, moving away from the bad news, let's talk about things that has already been released, but we're going to uh, some little updates here and there. Uh, let's talk about Little Noah Sign of Paradise. That is a uh, 2D platform game that's been released by Side Game. The game will be getting two DLC as part of the Princess Connect Redive collaboration. The first DLC is available right now with uh, new Lilliputs, which are like these little avatar things that you can take with you to do like different attacks uh and also different accessories and the second dlc will actually be available in september uh it is a nice little game and i am actually super excited to uh play it at some point uh and i don't even like a uh, roguelike platformer but it just looks like a really good game it's got great reviews so if those that's your thing maybe look into that it's like 15 dollars too it's not even like you know, like a fully priced game. So check it out. All right. And then we have yeah. another update here to a game called, uh, I, I believe this is pronounced maybe Edo. Uh, yeah, it's Edo. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's ED-0 uh, Zombie Uprising. But it mm-hmm. but it's probably Edo as in like Japan. Uh, so anyways, yeah, the Edo period. Yeah. Yeah. The action mm-hmm. roguelike from D3 Publisher is still in early access and players will now be able to play as a new ninja character named Matoka, who plays as a, a who, uh, plays as an assassin and can unleash devastating ninjutsu. Mm, so perfect pronunciation there, sir. <laughs> what? Uh, M- Matoka? Motoka? No, ninjutsu. <laughs> oh, ninjutsu. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Claps. All right. Yeah, uh, I, I'm so I think we talked about this game at some point. Uh, it's this. Oh, what is it? What's the word? It's um, it doesn't look very polished, right? It looks kind of like a PS2 game almost. But I think that's like the charm to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a, 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 like every time the map's a little different and it plays kind of like do you remember Tenchu? Oh, yeah. Tenchu it, Stealth I, Assassins it, on PS1. That was. Yes, I, it I looks remember a lot like that yeah. i think we talked about it once upon a time and and we had a little discussion about my experience especially how uh he was so terrible at swimming mm-hmm. <laughs> she's still the assassins <laughs> he's just like he's a very stealthy ninja but as soon as he hits like a puddle he's like splashing around like he's drowning <laughs> <laughs> uh. i know all these ninjas do but i cannot swim <laughs> didn't learn how to swim in ninja school no <laughs> exactly Oh man. Um, yeah. Okay. So those are all the updates to previous games. Now let's talk about upcoming releases. Now we missed that one week of shows. So some of these games are not exactly upcoming releases, but things that have already been released, but we want to talk about anyway. Uh specifically this one. This game is called Before the Night, and it's developed and published by a studio called Uneducated Game Studio. Uh, and it's this adorable horror action adventure game, which is things that I love. If you guys didn't know that already, uh, somehow slipped my radar. And I just want to make sure all of you guys know about it. In this game, you play as a little girl named Lisa, who's trapped in a world where animals keep humans as pets and mm-hmm. food stocks. Let's take a look at the trailer. You, okay. You'll see why I'm like, whoa, how did I not hear about this? Uh huh. It's extremely trippy. The music is already extremely trippy. Oh, I'm not sure if they can hear it. Here, let me fix that. Oh, 
Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, oh no. That's, how, uh, how did how did this skip me? I it, hmm. I don't I don't know why. Hmm. Oh. There's more to this trailer. Okay. Yeah. So this game actually came out in July, which was like a month ago. Uh, but. But better, better late than never. Yeah. Uh, I I wanted to bring this to your attention. So again, this is kind of a two D horror action adventure game, uh, very similar to like um, Yomawari, right? That that uh -huh. sort of feel. So if you guys are looking for a good horror game, I do believe this is from a Korean developer too. Just like self publishing it. Uh, it's a relatively short game. Uh, not full price. It's on Steam only. So if you're interested, check it out. I, I'm definitely going to be streaming this. Uh, comes like October time. So yeah, that's yeah. super interesting looking. Very has, has that very dissonant uh, yeah. theme going on and dissonant music uh, tied to it, of course, as well. Yeah, no, the, but... the, the the story seems really intriguing and the yeah. art looks amazing. I you know I didn't we didn't see any like actual gameplay art, but I promise you check that out the the game art looks phenomenal okay yeah uh we All also right. have uh another game here coming oh go ahead so this the, this next game is actually the one that the the uh, it's, it's crazy that you I picked know. this uh right okay go ahead i'll, I'll let you <laughs> take it yeah. away so so yeah the the person who left the voicemail said that they were starting to play some frail hearts and that's what we're going to be talking about this time. Uh, so <laughs> this is from uh, an Italian developer, Seges. Uh, uh, Se 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 I don't know how you. Hey, thank thank you for picking this one because I have no idea how to pronounce that either. It it's <laughs> probably sounds Italian. Uh, anyways, yeah. uh, so the publisher, uh, Rav Ravenage. 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 Probably. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Raven Age Games comes the story rich indie JRPG called Frail Hearts. Uh, Vers Versticore de Million. <laughs> Thank you for picking this one out because I can't pronounce this either. <laughs> That's okay. I'll just I'll just destroy it anyway and, mm -hmm. and own it. So players will experience this as a turn-based and uh, RPG that is reminiscent of the old Dragon Quest series. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. we have a trailer for this one as well. So let's check Frail Hearts out as well. Now this Frail sounds Hearts, super yes. familiar. I feel like mm -hmm. I've heard of this, but but I don't know if I've seen it. Hmm. Well, time to look at it. God, this epic music. I love it. Love the music. Love the art. Yeah. Gotta love the, uh... Of course, you get that art, uh, you get that tarot cards in there. Uh-huh. I was gonna say the, the black and white... Oh, look at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the black and white, uh, the demons and stuff that you're fighting look pretty cool. There you go. That that's the kind of combat, like yeah. you know. So that's why the combat is uh, is kind of similar to the DQ sort of combat. Yeah, and you play as uh, four different individuals here. So you got a gangster, mm -hmm. yeah. a nun, a bookworm, and a scholar. Yes. Um, so I, I'm assuming that the the bookworm is probably more of like a fantasy bookworm and not like a. Because I feel like a scholar not, is kind of like a different kind of... Not an actual worm. <laughs> <laughs> not an yeah, actual worm. Zero out of ten. Unplayable. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no. it looks like there's there maybe even five characters. But yeah. Oh. Uh, so you so, can look forward yeah. to seeing that on the 16th of last week. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Which was released on PC only via Steam. 
so that's right yeah you know speaking of italian like horror didn't we cover this one other game that like sort we of did roots from yeah you know it, it's got it's, it's not exactly the same but it has that similar kind of vibe you uh -huh. know like i don't know i don't know how to put my finger on it but it's got that similar vibe so hey, if you if you're into that i think that that could be a good game it's also got this um a little bit like uh a little bit like mother doesn't it like a little earth bounty maybe i i, I don't yeah. know i mean it, it has, definitely has those like dragon questy inspirations which dragon questy yeah and earthbound was straight up just a, a dragon quest like clone <laughs> let's 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 be real it was uh as, as like mechanically so let's call spade a spade yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah no but it's definitely got those vibes so hey uh i, I think it's definitely good for like one of those retro gamers that don't want to play a retro game, uh, but something new and unique. I, I think it's got a lot of great uh, new ideas in it. So check it out. All right. Uh, so we've got another game uh, that it came out already, but we're going to talk about it just to remind everyone. And the game is called Thymesia. It is a 3D Souls-like game that is already available now uh, as of 8.18 on ps5 xbox series xs switch and pc via steam and uh was it good old gaming yep good old games. games yes yep. Uh -huh. so uh check that out it's got a pretty good review from what i've seen from folks who are into uh the souls s game so hey if you like the souls game check that out okay so moving along uh let's see we had another one that was released Toho 18.5. That's a lot of Toho games, huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Black Market of Bulletphilia. 100th Black Market. In celebration of uh, Kamiket 100, Zun, the creator of Toho, released Toho 18.5 Black Market of Bulletphilia. 100th Black, Pla Black Market. Ugh. What a title. What a title. What a title. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that released on the 14th of this month on PC via Steam, and it is currently in Japanese only, but Baku here suspects that a fan translation patch will probably come along pretty soon. Because, because they always do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Tra Translating a Toho game is not hard. <laughs> it's just, and there are a lot of fans. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, we got Fallen Legion, Rise to Glory, and Revenants Double Pack. Uh, this is actually speaking in future turns now, as tomorrow, uh, 823, mm. will be released on PS5, Xbox Series XS, and PC. So this is a, uh, I believe it is a turn-based, um, tax sort of, it's kind of tactical-ish RPG um that that uh requires you to time your uh buttons to block correctly it looks like a really cool um actually no i wouldn't say tactical it's more like a valkyrie profile kind of game um okay. but they they've asked some tweaks to it and it, it looks really interesting it's a game that i've been meaning to play now it's the double pack it has the first game which is uh rise to glory and also the second game revenants in the same um disc so you're getting two games in one so check that out uh tomorrow sweet uh, on the 25th, uh, we have SD Gundam Battle Alliance. So if you're on the fence about this game, the demo of this action RPG is out right now uh, for those who might be interested. Now, for clarification, that is uh, uh, SD Gundam that is super deformed. It does not mean that it is standard <laughs> definition. This is a high definition game. It's coming out on wow. uh, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S, Nintendo Switch, and PC. It is a mouthful, but yeah, I, I still, you know, I watched that trailer and I still fail to see how this is an RPG, but we'll see. I mean, they keep yeah. touting it as an action RPG, so it's like, okay, well, well that's play the want. demo and find out. Yeah, let, let's see if it really is an RPG. I, 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 it's not like they're... key feel like... It, it's yeah, the weirdest thing. It's not like they're getting any clout by calling it an RPG. Like, we're making a we're making a, a game that is very niche. Like that's that's not a, a thing. You, like I don't know. I guess RPGs are kind of gaining mm. popularity lately. Mm. So it's very I'm, strange, very strange. But hey, all the Gundam yeah. fans, check it out. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. Next, we've got this little gem uh, called Soul Hackers Two. Uh, mm. Please hype responsibly 
But yeah. the new SMT game is finally here, and we're gonna look at the combat trailer so we can see what fighting in this game is like. I I wonder. Um, yeah. Oh geez, I don't have this in the because uh, it's not it's not a link. It wasn't a link there it's... in the uh, in the docket, so I missed it. So hang on a second, oh, no. stall, stall real quick while I while I uh, throw this. Yeah. So uh yeah. So Mister Invalid is is here. He says never will I hype responsibly. Hype cool. hype responsibly. Explore a brand new supernatural RPG in Soul Hackers Two. Where stylish devil summoners and um, dangers lurk. Is that an official trailer? The it is. Japan. Okay. It's up to the agents of Ion to decrypt destiny <laughs> and save. This the is from the Atlas uh, website. I mean, Welcome Atlas YouTube channel. Okay. Today, yeah. we'll discuss the. I, I try to find uh, official trailers whenever devil possible. Okay, because it sounded kind of like it, it kind of sounded like some some random guy just talking about <laughs> soul hackers. <laughs> Demons can be assigned to each of Ringo's teammates, and they will then have access to that demon's abilities. In you know, I'm only laughing because I thought the I same thing when I first saw it. <laughs> okay. I was like, who are they hiring to do this? <laughs> I mean, I'm not casting shade or anything. But no, no, I'm 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 a hundred percent casting shade. <laughs> okay, that's fair. As Ringo's connections with her allies deepen, she will gain access. This to looks so skills. good. I wanted to look, I wanted to, like, I didn't look at the whole thing. I only saw, like, the first, like, bits. Like, okay. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely looking pretty interesting. Wow. Unlock commander skills at Compsmith, but they're worth it. It's a good idea to upgrade whenever you have the materials. As a demon's level increases, they will... Even demon's animation looks really nice. Their full potential. Oh yeah, they look a lot like the models from uh, SMT Five, but mm. higher scale, like more detail on them. Because See, maybe that's I mean, the problem. I mean, the Switch couldn't really handle as many polygons, right? So I mean, I think that they were the same source models. I mean, also there's a different rendering engine in use that gives them that, yeah. that style. Um, it's nice. Yeah, they look really nice in the uh, in the trailer there. Wow, that looks really stylish. I am, I, I, I am going to be hyping responsibly. But uh, wow, wow, yeah, that looks a lot better than. I mean, I already, I already thought that was going to look great. From like, I, I think I've only seen like the first two trailers, and yeah. I've like not been looking at any trailers since mm -hmm. uh, until now. And yeah, wow, neither. that looks phenomenal yeah i don't want to bring up any trailers that might contain any level of spoilers so i figured you know what combat trailer yeah that should be pretty that, safe yeah that's pretty safe just looking at how things and you know what i from from my perspective i like seeing how the battle carries out because that's pretty important to me i wonder though because look i've recently been playing p4 uh and it's just a lot more I don't want to say slice uh, a lot of like living as a teenager and hang out with your friends than like actual combat. Um, I think <laughs> so. I wonder how how many percent of combat like it's going to happen in this game, or is it going to be a, a lot more like life happening things? Like, because I've never mm -hmm. played, um, you know, uh, so hackers, so I have no reference, yeah, uh, whatsoever. But hey, if you guys tell me, oh yeah, by the way, this is like way more combat. Uh, then Persona. Then I welcome it because I actually do they like the combat uh, a lot. Um, well, for reference, yeah. uh, I mean, this is this is not a Persona not a spinoff. It is more of a spinoff of SMT, which mm -hmm. doesn't really have any of that sort of uh, visual novel uh, side of things in in SMT. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, you might you might not expect if, if that's something that you really love about you know the Persona series, then that that might be something that you miss. I don't know. Uh, we'll have hmm. to find out if uh, if how, just what the balance is actually. Yeah. Well, we'll wait and see. So the game is coming out on the twenty sixth, released on PS four, PS five, Xbox One, Xbox Series XS, and the PC. No Switch. You see that, Mister Invalid? <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's he's just hating on the Switch right now. He's he's such a Switch hater. Anyways, uh, DLC will uh is already announced. Uh, it's got some booster items. Six different outfit packs, uh, including, I believe, P4 and P5 uh, school outfits. Uh, eight exclusive D 
demons, Mara included, which a lot of fans are not too happy about this. They're like, Mara is locked behind a paywall. What? Oh. Yeah, no, I know. I know. I know. I know. Of, I wonder if things. it's like a dollar paywall just to like, because that's the other <laughs> thing. That's that's the other thing is like, this is, I mean, the Mara demon, don't look it up if you don't already know what it is, but it's, <laughs> you know, it, it's a very strong demon, uh, both visually striking and uh and and very polarizing you know mm. so yeah it's, uh, it's locked behind a payroll because uh they want to be a mara about it <laughs> yeah exactly they, they probably just want to make sure that people uh don't see it when they're not expecting it because it'll probably bring them unnecessary flack maybe um <laughs> if, if if they do who knows who knows maybe mm. not i i mm. who can say that there's so, also a DLC story uh, called The Lost Numbers. So okay. yet, yet more content that I'm pretty sure people are not going to be happy about. Day one DLC with extra content are things that people hate. So Atlas, I don't know why you did this so early, but okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. So along with that, uh, I do want to bring up uh, for anyone who might care. Uh, this is kind of a related story, but Atlas also released uh, a streaming guideline. Now, for, this is interesting uh, to me. Yeah. For So Hackers 2. Now, I'm sure that um, a lot of you guys remember the Persona 5 uh, streaming guideline, which and, was like extremely restrictive. Right? SMT5 and, as well. And SMT5 as well. But uh, you may be uh, relieved to hear that the guideline for So Hackers 2 is actually uh, not too bad, actually. Really? Um, so, okay. You know, yeah. They're like, well, they'll ask you to cite some stuff and just like maybe put like a spoiler tag, but they're not going to go like, oh, you can't stream past certain event, you know, like. So I think maybe Atlas is finally learning. Okay. To not do this. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Because that that's gonna give them bad publicity every time. Because it's like the only people that it affects are the people with audiences. <laughs> yeah. Like that's, so that's a bad. I, I think they're <laughs> learning. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're learning. So we're gonna be linking the uh, guideline uh, in the description when it's ready. I I just think I typed that up. That's on me. Uh. So yeah. So you guys can read all about it. Yeah. I read it. Cool. It actually wasn't so bad. Yeah, I'm very so glad bad. to hear that because I, yeah. I was thinking about maybe giving it a go. Um, once Me too. once the game comes out, I was thinking like maybe because I, I had made promises before about diving into Golden Sun Lost Age. And maybe I should play mm -hmm. that first just to give people time to play through it if they're concerned about spoilers or something. But mm -hmm. maybe maybe that I don't know, maybe that'll be my return to, to Twitch because mm. I would I, I really would like to get back to streaming on Twitch again here soon. Um, yes, everyone misses you, by the way. That hiatus there, has people been come unexpected to my and... stream really? asking where Derek is. And I'm like, how the heck am I supposed to know where a grown person is? <laughs> like, can you ask him on like Twitter? Like he has a Twitter. Uh, they're like, yeah, have you seen Derek? I'm like, yes. <laughs> as much as every you week. have <laughs> every week oh, man. what do you mean oh yeah, boy yeah i just had a lot on my plate and I, i'm trying to i was trying to get a couple of reviews finished before adding to my backlog of reviews to do mm. so anyways that's that's my bad anyway let's continue <laughs> on yes uh, I'm, I'm really glad to hear though about the soul hackers 2 streaming guidelines now i don't have to worry about it yeah, so, well, I mean, read through it, mm -hmm. but it's, oh, yeah. it's going to be a lot better than the previous ones. The skulls were gross. Yeah, I mean, because mm -hmm. P5 was particularly <laughs> egregious. Do not play beyond a specific date in game. Oh, wow. boy. They were ridiculed to death over that one, and I still remember it. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. So we have a bunch of new games that were announced, starting with a, a, a combo pack here from Sunsoft. It's not actually a combo pack, but they announced a threefer. So Sunsoft, mm -hmm. everybody, is back. And according to their newest event video, the company just announced three new titles, Icky Unite, Gimmick, and Euphoria. So, Icky Unite is a multiplayer co-op roguelike game based on the Icky action games. This title will allow up to 16-player co-op to team up against a feudal overlord. Closed mm -hmm. beta is coming soon to PC via Steam. Yeah. Also, we have Gimmick, 
with an exclamation point. And I believe that that wasn't a gimmick that was on the NES back in the day. Uh, yes. And it's, yeah, I it's one of those so. old school hard games. Uh, so yeah. this is now in development for PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC via Steam as well. This is a punishingly difficult platformer that will be released sometime in winter of this year. And then lastly, we have Euphoria, which is a Metroidvania-style game that is slated for consoles in 2023. And uh, we have a t uh, teaser trailer for Icky Unite as well. Yes, so just, just Icky Unite, yeah. Yeah, just Icky Unite, so we'll give that a quick gander here, if yes. I can find it in my list. <laughs> it's the third one. Oh, oh, it's the one in all Japanese yeah. letters. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I couldn't couldn't spot it in the list thank you got you yeah so if you look at this game uh it looks what is a this? lot like uh, yeah what is this indeed and so it looks a lot like uh, a game that was recently super popular called um uh uh, uh uh vampire survivor right okay now i think the big difference here is that uh you get to play with your friends i think that's probably the most important thing is 16 people co-op I think this is probably uh, maybe even a little late to market. If they released this last year, I think uh, people would be super stoked. Uh, but you know, now now that people are sort of going out again, and maybe a little late to market, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the prime time was like in the midst of COVID, where no yeah. one's going anywhere, yeah. and we were all looking for like multiplayer games to play with a bunch of our friends. Uh -huh. and, and they were just in short supply. I mean, yeah, sure, you have your Jackbox and what have you, but even those get stale. So this yeah. actually looks like a really fun game to play with your friends. Uh, fun fact, the, the Icky series, um, I, uh, uh, I don't know how true this is, but the Icky series actually gave rise to the uh, Japanese uh, slang uh, Kusoge, which basically means crappy game. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Yeah, it's just okay. it's so it's so like crappy looking that okay. they they call so it. So it's not just game. me because when you <laughs> no, said no, it's not. <laughs> okay, because so it's part of the charm apparently okay. to look crappy as heck. Okay, uh, but well, if it plays well it. and it's fun, then you know, <laughs> then that's fine. They nailed it then, because yeah, I was absolutely. I was waiting for you to take a breath so I could say this game looks like poo, <laughs> but um. I mean, if the gameplay is fun, then I suppose that that's what matters. Yeah, I, I can definitely see this as a streaming game. Like, you know, just to hang out with your community. Uh, I, I don't imagine this costing a whole lot to get into. Maybe like a couple of bucks. So yeah, uh, definitely a game that <laughs> would appeal to uh, a lot of uh, streamers. And if you want to play with your favorite streamers and they happen to be playing this game, hey, you know, it could be could be a fun time. Yeah, yeah, it looks that is, like absolute doo doo, but it I, is, that's again that's part of the charm. It so. is absolutely an icky looking game. <laughs> yeah, it, it's but um, I think that's the reason why they call it that. No, it's not. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of new games, uh, I don't know how to segue into this. Uh, there is a new Fatal Fury title green lit. SNK Ooh. announced in Evil twenty twenty two, which for those who don't know is uh one of the most uh famous uh fighting uh, tournaments uh, fighting tournament yeah worldwide uh evil 2022 uh and that a new fatal fairy game is currently in development there is a short teaser trailer that doesn't show you a lot but we're gonna show it to you anyway so let's take a look Alrighty. and eh, it doesn't really show a whole lot but you know we have to be thorough 30 seconds long. <laughs> the city of legend still breathes. Hungry wolves I love this back on the prowl. <laughs> A new destiny hidden in darkness. <laughs> it's the, the same 90s. photo every time. <laughs> they have a picture. <laughs> new Fatal Fury. <laughs> Garo Greenlit. I cannot find a more 90s tune. That is... <laughs> That was some royalty-free stuff right there, mm -hmm. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That's like that's like a backing track for like you know. Have you have you have you need a car? You don't need anybody down if you come on down to old Rusty's. <laughs> it's like soft rock with some kind of jazz, like oh my synth, god, like some synthy yeah. kind of saxophone. It's it's like they had the the. You ever listen to like "Dude Looks Like a Lady" but from Aerosmith? <laughs> 
It's like the. Yeah. Da, da, da. It's like they have oh, a, like a little clip God. of that just on a loop <laughs> in the background. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, very what, what a way. What what a way to bring that back because if you guys don't know this, uh, the last time they did a Fatal Fury game was in fact in the nineties, nineteen ninety nine to be exact. So no kidding. They haven't made a well. I mean, the, the characters from Fatal Fury have made appearance in another game. In fact, I think they uh, Terry was uh, in uh, Capcom. May, uh, uh, no, no, it was in um, no, it's a Nintendo game. Uh, uh, Smash. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Taylor's in Smash, so yeah, that that's like extremely recent, relatively. Uh, but a f- actual Fatal Fury game, nineteen ninety nine. Oh, Fatal Fury game, nineteen ninety nine. Wasn't there also uh, a a gender bent game that they released somewhat recently as well for Fatal like Fury? King of Fighter, but the, yeah, the, the, oh, I think that's yeah, King. That's of, I think that's King oh, of yeah. Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah those characters of... appear in King of Fighter, and King of Fighter have been having new games, but just an actual like not okay. King of Fighter mismatched just a fatal fury game um 1999 which is crazy gotcha. uh, no no additional news no platform no time frame that was like all we've got but you know it's on our radar now so we'll check on it cool. uh, next up we got a game that uh mr Derek's gonna be super excited i can't wait to see you see this trailer man yeah speaking of new games mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just mm. gonna borrow Baku's transition there. Jack Move <laughs> is a cyberpunk RPG that now has a release date and a new animated trailer. It looks good. It, it looks good. All right, it let's looks so good. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, that looks like some. I was gonna that say like kind of like some nineties anime. Mm-hmm. Maybe like a, a mix between like actually maybe eighties. Eighties yeah, even anime 80s, style. Yeah. Look at those shoulder more pads, 90s. man. <laughs> yeah, those are some wicked. That's wicked shoulder pads. Who needs those? She means business. <laughs> Did they take him? Did they find what they I love it. Her dad got kidnapped and we're laughing about shoulder pads. We're terrible people. Look at that I mean, floppy who, who, disk. I mean, oh who else God, besides it's a, floppy a disk. lady, a powerful woman in shoulder pads can only steal her dad. These guys have really bad aim. Well, they're like stormtroopers. This looks like yeah. a scene out of Ninja Turtles, you know? Like, that's the other thing it reminds me of, this animation style. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's like, huh? What happened? Keep <laughs> shooting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a powerful drone. Yes. So this is more gameplay. Uh, I actually really like this. They did the animation, but they also drew the gameplay. The yeah. gameplay looks so sick Amazing. here in this battle. Amazing. Gameplay looks so good. Dude, that so, is so uh, cool. Yeah, so in Jack Move, basically, the girl has uh, the power to kind of hack into reality, and that's how she, like, uses these sort of uh, moves uh, that you see. So it's it's a really cool concept, and, and the execution looks phenomenal. I've not been this excited about Indies for a, a while now. Well, the, well, I think the last time was that, that one that we were watching where you had to watch it twice. Remember yes. that one? Uh, yeah, yeah, this I, is the other one. Yeah, yeah, this one was super cool. I remember we saw like a, a, a short teaser trailer of like the gameplay, I think. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and I was excited for it then. Yeah. More excited now. And they did wow. a solid job. Uh, so this game is coming out <laughs> on the 8th of September uh, for yes, PC via soon. Steam and Epic Game Store as well as uh, Humble. And yes. on the 20th, it's coming to PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Yeah, Mr. Invel is just for you. Um, oh, yeah, I don't so know why cool. they do two separate dates, but man, it, yeah. it's coming soon. I mean, well, what, if I had like... to guess, it's probably because the physical versions maybe have to ship or something. Who knows? Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming yeah, it's, it's physical. Little... Maybe maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's a little bit more than two weeks. So, hey, Derek, I don't know. Is, 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 are you sure uh, So Hacker 2 is the game you're going to come back to? Are you sure? 
what do you mean play this indie gem instead because it's so low profile and then have two so hackers too mm. Mm. i mean this 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 no one okay i, I don't want to be mean but like relative to all these like big grand titles like it's gonna be relatively less played right that is that is true yeah but this game looks phenomenal it it, it really does uh, well, I'll consider while Derek I'll consider... thinks about that, <laughs> while he thinks about that, let's talk about another horror game because you guys know I like horror games. So, uh, this new title is called The Forest Drizzling Rain. And it's a very weird title, uh, but I think it's actually a direct translation from Japanese. This game was originally released in Japan in 2013, and this is a full remake that's coming to the West. Following the death of her parents, uh, Shiori, kan uh, Shiori Kansaki happens across an old photo of uh of themselves in the bedroom and the photograph shows a young shiori uh with her parents with the along the inscription that says uh azakawa village so the game has shiori travel to the village to discover their family secret mm -hmm. um seems like a typical horror game plot yeah sure yeah. all right so you want to take a look at the the trailer then yes please all righty then only only because you said please though yep the late 90s <laughs> hey that's my jam one night in a small village in japan a lamentable tragedy occurred well, the first off your thing <laughs> i missed the of <laughs> that made a little bit more sense the forest of drizzling rain oh that looks yeah like it's missing frames of animation looks... but you know <laughs> I, mean, I mean the the rest of it looks nice i i feel like when it's done deliberately it's it's a little it's, it's kind of charming it, it brings back like you know like a, some like some previous age maybe yeah a little bit yeah. maybe sweet it in one ish and like the, yeah. the the character like dimensions as well as like a couple frames of animation but Sometimes I sometimes I wonder if it's like, are you just lazy or did this on purpose, right? Uh, it's a thin line. If you have to ask, I think it's a sign that maybe could use a little work. It <laughs> could be. It is an expansive full remake. So there you go. That's another. That's the another. Of drizzling rain. Yeah, CD not bad. Horror. <laughs> I'm all about these. I mean, I, I think that's, that's something nice about these games, especially for us who play a lot of JRPGs. Are like, well, each of these JRPGs, especially like the triple A ones, are like 100, 150 hours. Yeah. These small titles are like maybe 15 oh, yeah. hours. Bite sized in comparison. Yeah. And, and it just feels so good to just play one of these and just be like, oh my God, I finished the game in like two streams. Wow. Amazing. I could actually do this. Um, so yeah, so that's what they're really good for. All right. Well, we also, so, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say that the game is coming out a uh, fall of this year. So if you guys are like me and are interested in these kind of 2d horror games uh that's coming out uh probably in the next couple of months so keep an eye out on it yeah well so uh previously we've talked a little bit about this game uh and we finally have a release date and a new trailer for Daraemon, uh story of seasons friends of the great kingdom so yes. now Doraemon, that's that's one of your favorites right baku oh yeah i grew up with Doraemon. i love them all right let's uh let's give this a, a gander then Yes. Uh, so this is a Story of Seasons game spinoff. So for anyone who are like big on like farming simulators, mm -hmm. and if you're like me, you grew up with Doraemon, uh, this is going to be a treat for you because yeah. uh, they're going to uh, basically let you use Doraemon's like gadgets to help you along with these like farming kind of like uh, things. So uh, activities. So they they've like kind of like integrated the the story of season gameplay which a lot of people like with these like gadgets that's uh, you know what Doraemon's known for so i think it's pretty cool the art looks amazing uh quite honestly so uh especially for these these kind of games uh, yeah. i think it looks very endearing 
So, uh, take, 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 take a second away from all the horror games and bloodlust and murdering things. We're <laughs> in a farming sim now. Yeah, and it's not just any farming sim. This is a continuation again of the Harvest Moon series from back yes. on the uh, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64. Um, Story Seasons is, is what they now call that series. Uh, Harvest Moon, the new ones are uh, unrelated, which is... Hmm. A weird rabbit hole in and of itself, but yeah. yeah. If you were into the original Harvest Moon games, Story Seasons is probably where you want to be looking now. Yeah, this t this time this trailer has is a little bit more extensive, and I believe the last time we got it was like just full Japanese with like no translation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but this time they're actually, uh, I think this one's the official English, uh, uh, translated trailer, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you get, that's a I nice looking game. Different alien. Yeah, no, it looks amazing. I don't even like farming sims, and I'm like, maybe I'll give it a shot, I don't know. It just looks it's, cozy, you know? So know. if you're, you know, if you're into, uh, what's, what's the, uh. Where's the music? Are you guys not able to hear any trailer music at all? Oh, there whatsoever? wasn't a whole lot of music. It was just a person talking mostly. I have mm. I have to have it kind of low, otherwise we hit, you know, copyright stuff. Ah, okay. Well, there so. you go. That's what you guys were asking about. And yeah. it confirms your beliefs that it was indeed. But no worries, because once I put the description up, uh, you guys can find all the links in the description, as always. Any trailer that we show, any... Uh, you know, news article that oh, yeah. uh, a primary sources always in the description. It's just a little late today because I just started my new job today and I just didn't have time to type it up. But uh, after after the after the the show, um, probably sometime tomorrow it'll be up. So uh, you can take a look at that. OK. All right. So anyways, uh, the game is coming out in the West here on uh, November 2nd of this year, and it's coming out on PS5, Nintendo Switch, PC via Steam. That's right. All right. So, uh, we've got another game that was previously just, uh, full Japanese that are now being, uh, released, uh, worldwide, and it is developed by Acquire and published by PQ. Yeah, mm -hmm. PQ's been picking up a lot of games. They have. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I always kind of thought of PQ before as being kind of like a, a smaller localization team, smaller mm -hmm. publisher, but like they've really been picking up steam, like you said. Like, yeah. Especially I, 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 with <laughs> this like niche of like, like, yeah. Yeah. They're a lot great. of acquire games, uh, but also it uh, was like the, the, uh, the, the, the story of heroes. I, have, I forgot what, what series that was called, but it's like something hero series. I think they picked Class that of up heroes. and then. Class of Heroes, thank you. The Class of Heroes series, there's that new game that we talked about. They picked that yeah. up. Uh, and then there is that, like, um, Alchemist game. Uh, they picked that up. Yeah. So this game is called Labyrinth of Zangetsu. Uh, this is a Japanese art and folklore-inspired dungeon crawler, so something that I probably will not play. But okay. I know there are a lot of you guys are fans of dungeon crawler games, and this game is finally announced for the West. Uh, the game features beautiful Japanese ink art, which ties into the ink monsters that you will actually battle. Oh, so, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so th thematically and artistically are like linked. So let's take a look at that trailer so you can see what I'm talking about. Like the art actually looks like phenomenal. So it's like a sumei. Is that what it's called? The the Japanese. Like... Yeah, I believe so. Look at that. Like as you're walking, Ooh. like this ink just spawns. Like the um, what is it? The environment spawns. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's just uh, aesthetically. Yeah, like it gets painted in. Yes, yes. Super cool. I think it's super cool. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit disturbing looking. Mm hmm. Kind of reminds me of scary stories to tell in the dark. The old, uh, uh, it, it kind of from... reminds me of, um, uh, Okami too. Because oh, yeah, Okami yeah. also has this heavy, like, ink, uh, uh, uh art, it's aesthetics. Yeah. So, yeah, so definitely along that line. So yeah, so if you like that kind of art and you're a big like uh, dungeon crawler gamer and RPG, yeah, maybe this is 
uh, right up your alley. So this game is going to have a early 2023 release. So it's going to be a couple months from now, but it will be released on PS4, Switch, and PC uh, with physical pre-order for PS4 and Switch already live. So uh, yeah, so look forward to it in a couple of months. Awesome. And I, I went ahead and left this one up for you as well, because I knew <laughs> that... I mean, no, I, is, I was this... waiting. I was waiting for you to talk about this one. Oh, you want you wanted me to talk about Nep Nep? I mean, did you want to talk about this one? Do you want to call it Nep Nep? No, no, you, you got this. I've never played Nep Nep before. <laughs> oh God, okay. This Sorry. seems like it'd be much more your alley. <laughs> so, uh, we've got a new game from Neptunia. I was I was mistaken. I thought this was like yet another remake, but no, this is actually a brand new game. Wow, that's been um, a while since I've done a new game. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it's called Neptunia Sisters versus Sisters. First, I thought they were redoing the second game because, like, I, I think like the second game was Sisters something. So, uh -huh. uh, Idea Factory International has announced Neptunia Sisters versus Sisters will finally be coming to the West in both standard and limited edition, uh, as per uh, basically Ify's uh, uh, protocol. In this game, you play as the goddess candidates, uh, led by Nepgear, uh, who is uh, also the main character in Neptune 2, which is why I thought this was a Neptune 2 remake. Okay. Uh, who is awakened after a two-year slumber to find that the game industry has been upended by a treacherous threat called the Trendy Phenomenon. Let's take a look at that trailer. <laughs> trendy, God. Trendy Phenomenon. I know, I know. It's very on the nose. Everything about this game is it's very on the nose. It's, it's such subtle storytelling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> of course, there's no gameplay because it's a Neptune game, so you're going to watch a music video with pr pretty girls. Time for an impromptu dance party. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't know how many people are familiar with the Neptune series, but basically uh, the Neptune series is about a world called Game Industry, uh, where uh, there are four goddesses that uh, reside over the land, uh -huh. uh, where they fought a war called the Console War. Um, really? oh. And each of these nations represents like one of the um, uh, one of the uh, uh, game console makers. So uh, really, so, there's that yeah, kind of so, symbolism in this game. Yeah. So Vert is one of the characters you saw. Vert represents uh, Microsoft. Oh, she's she's Xbox. Was that so the green one green. with the blonde hair? Yes. Uh, oh, and go then figure. you have a nor which is a uh, playstation oh the, ps2 PS3 the one who, who's black. in all black okay yeah. sure and then you have um blanc who represents uh nintendo because of the wii uh okay. and then finally you have um uh neptune which represents um sega if they kept making consoles um so it's kind of like imaginary like if there were still four console makers um out oh. there. yes and hence nep gear because game gear and oh. neptune is a play on the sega saturn okay yeah, so there you go yeah so wow. that's, that's where yeah <laughs> that's where that came from yeah that was the original idea to the game and i think uh when they first released the game they didn't think that the game was gonna hit they just thought it was going to be like whatever. Um, but yeah, then the game has, be... uh -huh. yeah, the game has matured over time. I will say, I know it's a lot of fan service. I know, I know, I know. sure, uh, I know. It's, it's my guilty pleasure. I know. Uh, but the game has matured, I think, over time in terms of just like actual RPG gameplay. Because before uh -huh. it was just like fan service. Uh, the gameplay is that at best. Um, and even later series where like the jokes are getting kind of stale and that's like, I couldn't even really recommend it anymore. But the latest one that they came out with, which is V2, the gameplay actually matured a whole lot. So I'm oh. hoping that they will continue that trend and just have this game be taken a little bit more seriously as a JRPG and not just like fan service all over the place. Kind of, kind of doing like a, a South Park kind of deal where at first it was just a bunch of crude humor and stuff, but eventually yeah. evolved into something that was like a little more, uh, you know, 
I don't know. Worked, worked on their commentary, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I hope so. I hope so. I I I because it, it's kind of became their flagship game for some odd reason, and they have since released other game like ne- Compound Heart ne- uh, and, and Idea Factory have since released like Didn't some they do Death and Request. Game. Death and Request is one. It's still a lot of fan service, but uh, if you look away from that, the the writing mm-hmm. in that game is phenomenal it's one of the mo- best like written game i've ever seen the plot twist upon plot twist all the way to the end was insane i'll keep you guessing to the very end um but yeah so and cool. and all, there's this other game um shit i don't remember it has to do with like witches and whatnot and that was kind of like a tragedy kind of game but it worked on a couple other titles that i think even from like an rpg standpoint they're respectable fan service and all uh, so let's hope that that's something, uh, uh, you know, because <laughs> I would really like to be able to recommend this game as a JRPG and not just because not it has pretty girls in it. Yeah. I know, I know. Anyways, this game is coming out to the West in early uh, 2023 on PS4, PS5, and PC via Steam. The game is actually already available in Japanese in PS4 and PS5. So uh, if you want to just go ahead and weave out and just read Moon Runes, you can actually get the game right now on PS4, PS5. Uh, the rest of us, though, will wait until early 2023. All right. We got another game here that was announced called Little Goody Two Shoes. It's by a yeah. Portuguese developer, Astral Shift, and they've partnered up with Square Enix to bring this indie RPG to market. The game is centered around Elsie. Uh, I'm sorry, Elise. I pronounced that pretty poorly. Yeah. Okay, Elise, an ambitious girl determined to become rich and escape her humble life. Now that's something I can identify with. <laughs> Players will step into Elise's shoes and soon find themselves immersed in 90s-inspired horror role-playing adventure game. More horror role-playing games. Oh, my goodness. Because I like those. Oh, yeah. I'm sensing a theme. Do I need to start... Do I, do I need to start screening some of these, Baku? Is, there, is, there, is this becoming I, I think, a horror cast? They're, they're really catering to my taste right now. So, yes. Take a look. Right. Okay. So, is this the uh, the PlayStation Talents uh, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yes. it. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this actually is an earlier trailer. They didn't have a later trailer. But uh, from what I've seen, they haven't changed a whole lot. So, this is still going to tell you what the game looks like. Again, the art is amazing. Yeah. It definitely has like a 90s feel. Okay. It it, it lost me a little bit there. Okay, well, maybe not. Okay. So that's like they want to sort of recapture the PS2 era kind of look. I don't know if they've succeeded or not. And the art is... um, The art looks like... uh, It looks like like 40s, 50s, like Disney. Kind of like... (laughs) Yes. I mean, I don't know about like the the character themselves, but like the 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 backgrounds, the scroll, mm-hmm. like the parallax, uh, yeah. looks a lot like that. I, like that I, I will like say Snow White yeah, and the Seven I, Dwarves kind of deal going on there. I think the newest trailer does look a little better. Of course, it's been like two years, but it was just so short that I didn't think oh, okay. showing that made sense. I gotcha. I'm hoping for a better trailer later on, but just keep in mind that this is 2019 trailer. Yeah, this is, uh, this trailer is yeah. not exactly new. But yeah, but it just shows a lot of the game, so I decided to use this one instead. Mm. Yeah, the other one just showed like ten seconds of clips, and it yeah. doesn't tell you anything. So, okay. No, I thought the art looks like uh like early like late eighties anime. I mean, as far as like the the characters, the totally, portrait, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah the portraiture yeah. definitely has that look. Yeah, late and 80s. I know a lot of folks like. The, like the especially yeah. pointy character faces and stuff. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. But I think aesthetically, uh, this game this game has some things going on. Now, uh, this game is being partnered up with Square Enix. So I think that they're getting some additional help from Square Enix to really, uh, maybe even technologically, to help bring this game out. So I think they see some, uh, you know... They see something in this game. Uh, it's cool. I think it's for the Square Enix Indies Collaborative. I I, I don't know the full name, but mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I have high hope that this is going to be an interesting game. In fact, uh, I, I was very shocked to see this. The day that they announced this game, yeah, 
through the Square Enix Twitter, the game actually took over Square Enix's Twitter, which wow. is kind of crazy to me because this is the game that ha basically has no release date, okay? And it's an indie game. And Square Enix, of course, as you guys know, have a whole bunch of games that are coming out, and Very none sick. of them, right, are taking over the Square Enix um, Twitter. Yeah. So that was a strange choice, I thought, but that kind of made waves. They're like, what? Square Enix, like, uh, Twitter got taken over by Indies game. I think that was trending for a little. In fact, yeah. you know, I, I wonder if it's still up right now. I'm going to take a quick look at Twitter. Uh, All right. But yeah. Yeah, so the more I saw of that, so initially when I saw that it was a little jarring, I was like, oh, I'm not sure I love it. But the more I saw of it, the background art, just that's that's really what's getting me most excited. And the portraiture, the the sprites, not so much. Um, yeah. So hopefully that's maybe something that they continue to work on. I don't know. So anyways, yeah. currently, yeah, no release date or platform information is available. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll continue to provide updates to this game as they you, arise. You want to switch over to my screen really quickly? Sure thing. Yeah, let's look at that. You see this right here? Oh, Can you yeah, they, they really that? have. They've taken over the banner and, and yeah. Okay. Actually, actually, they took over the uh, not just the banner, but the um, the avatar too for a little <laughs> while. Yeah, no, it's true. Like for a while, the avatar was also uh, That's this very character. Interesting. And I'm just like, really? Like you have like no, <laughs> you have absolutely like no dates on this. I don't know why they've decided to do that. Yeah. But well, we hopefully are. they'll have updates soon since it's you know got so much traction now. Well, that's um, this. Oh, that is, is that the new trailer? Uh, that's the relatively new one, but uh, yeah, you see, that's like, it doesn't show you anything. Yeah. That's all just like. That's all it is. Huh. Yeah. Okay. That's why I'm like, okay, well, this tra doesn't show you anything. I couldn't find any better trailer, so we just went with the other one. Okay. Yeah. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll provide updates as they arise. Yeah. But that about wraps it up for all of the new games. Jeez, and it's... <laughs> We've been yeah. at it for a while yeah. already, but we haven't even mm -hmm. hit the industry news. Oh boy, well, here we are with the industry news. So let's start off with a pretty light one. And then Nintendo will reduce the Switch box size, but <gasps> not raise prices. Mm. Well, that's so good, yeah. I guess, because you're not getting any more cardboard <laughs> for it. Right, so according to a Nikkei report, uh, Nintendo will be reducing their packaging sizes to a Nintendo Switch, and that's going to help improve shipping efficiency, uh, the company's ability to meet demand for the system, which is actually, like, pretty pretty good news uh, yeah. from an environmental standpoint, and also just, you know, like, we, we've talked a lot about logistics, especially mm -hmm. because of COVID and what have you, and all of these things are just, like, compounding. Right. Like, yeah, what was a small problem compounds to be very big problems uh, when you have labor shortage and, uh, you know, just general lack of, uh, you know, transportation. Right. Yeah. In fact, uh, I just got news today. Actually, I should have brought that up earlier, but I just got news today that the limited edition or uh, the collector's edition for the. Um, so hackers too. Uh, the goods are actually being shipped, shipped separately, and they're gonna send you the game, uh, you know, on time. But all those bonus things, they're gonna send it to you later. Sort of like uh, what's that other game that they're doing this with? Xenoblade. Uh, uh, Xenoblade, yeah, Xenoblade Three. So it's like kind of similar story. But yeah. that's all because of logistics and and what have you, right? So yeah, so good on them for taking the approach to try to, you know, make this better one way or another. Now, in talking with Nikkei, uh, which is one of the biggest newspaper in Japan, uh, the Nintendo president, uh, Shintaro Furukawa, also said that Nintendo will not, uh, or is at least not currently considering a price hike uh, for the system. Uh, uh, Furukawa said that uh, their strategy really is to continue to expand the install base and push through software sales. So that's two separate tactics, like yeah. push the install base, sell more software right uh and i think that's actually really smart because guess what digital in uh digital downloads don't require logistics right so it's as true. long as i yeah. can push more hardware uh even at a cost leader as long as people are buying software uh it, it, it will come out on top uh and that strategy has actually worked out really well for uh the switch over to pandemic 
uh, which has made it basically the the highest, uh, the, the most sold console. Period. Out pay, out, out selling even the Wii, and which was the previous king yeah. of install base. Um, that actually aligns. Uh, so they're saying that the price hike wouldn't align with their grand strategy uh, because that would just price people out. So I, I yeah. think they they've got it like on, on head on head, and I think that's pretty notable because Sony is basically saying the opposite. Sony saying, "Yeah, we actually may have to raise the price on the system." Yeah, um, I don't wow. know if y'all heard about that. Yeah, that is so, diabolical. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. super smart. Um, yeah. it, it hadn't occurred to me like that, how much the, the size of the Nintendo switch packaging might actually affect their ability to move more units, but it totally makes sense when, when you lay it out like that, like, yeah, yeah. yeah Cause like absolutely. you're, you're shipping based on like, not just weight, but also mm -hmm. like dimensions. Yeah. The volume. size of the container. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if absolutely. you can pack more in there, then you can make more money Ship from that. that shipment and with yeah. logistics, the way it is that God, that makes sense. Um, yeah, no, sh sh like shipping costs has basically doubled over wow. uh, the pandemic uh, for commercial shipping, that is. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's insane. It's insane. And, um, you know, actually speaking on that, they already experienced some kind of sh like, you know, package uh, shrinkage because uh, the, uh, wow, I, I, I can't believe I just said package shrinkage. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Yes, so from the original Switch to the OLED version, Ashley has uh, gone down, I think, by about 14%. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, I, I think Nintendo see, like, the the uh, the benefits to uh, making sure that they're shipping something smaller, uh, mm -hmm. and they're going to look for ways to continue that trend. So good on them for looking for, like, new innovative way to solve a problem uh, from a different angle. Yeah, and I'm definitely. really hoping that like other uh, companies will take note and maybe also and shrink down their packages. Maybe, and that's one of the other reasons <laughs> I was thinking that's so diabolical is because the PS5 is huge in comparison. Oh, God, yeah. So not only like are they having to sell it because it's more powerful of a system and, and the chips are probably more expensive, but also the box has got to be just as big, and that's yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Well, wow. interesting things to consider. Thank you, Baku. Yeah. Uh, You're well, welcome. in other industry news, uh, we got the uh, Embracer Group making some new moves. So after they yes. purchased Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal and Square Enix Montreal, the group is back at it again. And this time it's to purchase several companies, most notably for us in the U.S., uh, the Middle Earth Enterprises, which owns mm -hmm. the worldwide exclusive rights to The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And, and <laughs> limited run games, which specializes in the release of digital games and physical media. Yeah. Not really JRPG related, but this is huge. Like yeah. the Embracer Group is really making some interesting moves here. Um, so and who I felt is like the this Embracer Group? Call. This sounds uh, familiar. Like, is this like an independent group of like wealthy people in like the Netherlands or something? Or? <laughs> so I, I think they started off with uh, us, the THQ Nordic, I think. Uh huh. And then uh, they, I think they got bought out by venture capitalists. Re rebranded bought a whole couple of other things just kept buying you know different companies and just kept growing i think is what happened uh because i didn't really they didn't really catch my attention until they purchased crystal dynamics and we've talked about yeah. it where they basically spent like an obscenely small amount of money to buy the rights to uh basically laura croft and uh, and maybe and maybe pay off the debts of square enix maybe well pay off debts and move into uh nft space because that that yeah. was the whole decision to sell all these well i wouldn't say the entire decision but uh part of it at least according to the president is so that they have capital to invest into this nft endeavor which i still think is stupid yeah like you just undersold three companies to go into a thing that no one wants you to go you know, into. Square Enix is doing this weird <sighs> thing, but I kind of appreciate the fact that they're also narrowing their focus. Like 
everything that they're showing these days, like every single one is one that I'm interested in. Mm, that is true. And I've heard actually good things about Dowfield now that they have a trailer out. Mm -hmm. uh, not trailer out, a demo. Now they have yeah. demo out. Some folks have played it and they're like, you know what? This game is actually pretty good. Um, so I actually haven't played a demo myself, uh, but I've just been that busy. Um, but I will soon. So I feel like maybe Square Enix by by selling those things to uh Embracer Group, like narrowed their focus uh onto a specific audience and that audience happens to be me and <laughs> and maybe i'm biased but i feel like that's like a good choice to to kind of return them to the roots of, of what made them great in the past uh, see so i don't know if i buy that right because mm -hmm. here's the thing that the studios that they sold for the most part are were pretty Western profitable studios no they're the western that's studios uh-huh so the Western studios, developers and the talents and games and schedules and audience do not conflate with the Japanese studios. So all the games that you're like super interested in, they're all they're like Japanese studios or mm -hmm. outsourced to yeah. other Japanese. Like uh, what's what's that one game? Um, uh, Valkyrie Elysium, right? That's outsourced to like a small studio. So it, it doesn't quite matter. They they don't even involve the right people. That's true, right? Yeah. So I mean, and they were making those games anyway, even if they didn't sell these studios. So um, I'm, I'm not sure if I would buy. I mean, that. I, I when it when it when I think of it, I think of it as kind of like strengthening the Square Enix brand and solidifying mm. it as like the JRPG company again, as opposed to. Mm the jrpg company that also does tomb raider that also does this and also does that anyway, yeah that, that's that's way off topic uh we can we can move along no 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 okay hey pe people here to to hear your opinion derek they, they miss your voice you, oh, know what you haven't been you haven't been streaming you gotta you gotta give the people <laughs> what they want <laughs> yeah all righty uh, so, uh, the next piece of news involves lots of Pokemon things. Uh, the online illustration exhibition, uh, for the, uh, trading card game, uh, is now open, uh, from August 10th to October 23rd. So it's not permanently open. Uh, it features three different areas, uh, called life history and artists. I took a look at it. Um, and it's just basically shows a bunch of, um, you know, uh, trading cards. So if you are a fan of the Pokemon trading card game, there is an online exhibition, uh, link in the description, uh, later on once I get that all together. Uh, some more exciting news for trading card, uh, games fans, the Pokemon company announced that the Pokemon 2023 world championship will take place in yokohama japan for the first time ever so that's super exciting news i don't know how they're actually going to do this though because uh, japan is not exactly open to tours uh because <laughs> boy if 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 it was you would be the first to not hear from me um i'll be gone for like three weeks uh but uh they are very keen on having this, uh, you know, uh, next championship. So the, the, the 2022 championship just ended. So there's like the next one is going to be in, in Yokohama. So pretty cool stuff, um, especially if you look forward to attending. So maybe you can visit Japan for the first time and actually uh, attend the world championship. Uh, also announced during the world championship in London uh, this uh, past month uh, is the Arceus Chronicles anime uh, special that will debut uh, on uh, what well, that that day sorry that debuted there uh, for the limited audience but also mm -hmm. will be available uh, in Netflix starting September so oh, yay okay. more uh, special uh, anime uh, I believe this one is gonna actually have Ash and uh, Don uh, who's like sort of like the main character from the uh uh from from that region i forgot that re right region is called okay um where, where arceus uh takes place mm -hmm. and i think they're being thrown back in time so it's kind of cool because they're now they're tying into the arceus game right yeah uh, so super cool uh love to see how that one plays out and i'm not even a big pokemon fan i just like seeing fun little like you know game tying things here yeah. and there so game tying big, tv series and, and movies and stuff all that fun stuff yeah. yeah so if you are a pokemon fan rejoice there there's a whole bunch of these things coming your way before uh of course uh violent scarlet which is i think like november so yeah, yeah. more things for you to be excited about 
Well, I got more exciting things for you to be excited about, Baku, since you are a fan of of video game (laughs) tie-in movies and and TV shows and stuff, because we have a bunch more films in the making to tie in to some of those games, including uh, Sega, who's currently working on two new films based on Space Channel 5 and Comics Zone in partnership with Picture Start. Uh, No visuals or estimated release windows are uh, out at the moment. Now, are you familiar with Comics Zone? Baku? I am not familiar with Comic Zone at all, but I it do is. know Space Channel 5. <laughs> Comic Zone is a rad Sega Genesis game. I, I'm not super what? familiar with uh, Space Channel 5, but Sega Genesis mm-hmm. game uh, where like, you're playing as a comic book illustrator who got sucked into his own comic, and it, it's mm-hmm. super rad, huh. super hard. It's very tough. Wow. Tough as balls. Um, so well, Space also, Channel Five is mm-hmm. uh, well. Before you move on, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Since since we're trading, uh, sure. Space Channel Five, I think, is a uh, girl who uh, is works at a fast food restaurant, changed into a uh, reporter who has to uh, fight aliens with groovy dance moves. Cool. If that okay. made any sense at all. Yeah, it's it's like a rhythm based game. I, I think I've seen it is some of a rhythm based game. Yeah. Yeah. Is hilarious, and and you know a lot of people wanted to see like a return of Space Channel Five, so maybe maybe the movie will bring about new games. Uh, you know that could yeah be, maybe that could be awesome. Yeah, ooh la la, yes. Yeah. All right. So, also coming from Sega is a Sonic Three movie that is slated for the twentieth of twenty twenty four. I'm sorry, the twentieth of December of twenty twenty four. Yes, twenty twenty four. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, based on the stinger at the end of Sonic 2, I am shocked to find out that there's a Sonic 3 in the works. Shocked, I say. <laughs> shocked. <laughs> Paramount took to Twitter to announce the next video or the next movie's release date. Uh, mm-hmm. Sonic 2 is currently the highest grossing video game film in the United States at $162.74 million. Yes. million. Old memes. Are, oh, I know. Yeah, it's an old meme, but it checks out. So yeah, yeah, not a bad, uh, not a bad little game uh, tie in there for sure. I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed half of it. the 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 part that didn't follow Sonic so much, kind of, I could have done without. But anyways, it was a fun movie. Um, yeah, and then it, it's crazy that Sonic is selling like crazy in the box office, but who the knew? games are just like I know. not doing hot, right? Who knew um, Sonic was supposed to just be a movie this entire dang time? Yeah. It's just wow. Uh, I can't wait to see how Mario does though, because you know, the Mario movie is coming. Will would the Mario be the inverse of it where they do amazing games and the movies are just, just like a, blah? Yeah. Completely. I'm like, oh, that'd be that'd be hilarious. That would be hilarious. I mean, yes. hey, the first movie they did was also pretty awful. <laughs> God. Just you saying, mean the animated maybe, one, right? Maybe that's oh, exactly geez. what they are. Maybe they are the opposites. Uh, now, mm-hmm. last but not least, mm-hmm. Bandai and Namco have announced that it too will enter the video game film business with its mascot, Pac-Man. <laughs> and I'm only laughing because that sounded like an Onion article. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I remember when there kidding. were rumors about Pac-Man, a Pac-Man movie a long time ago, and then it turned out that it was just like pixels with adam sandler mm-hmm. or something i was like oh, okay geez. yeah that was okay i mean it wasn't no. great but it was okay um anyways so a pac-man movie you mm-hmm. know about a guy who's a pill popper i guess i don't know yeah anyways no, no estimated <laughs> release window or visuals for this but the film will be based on an original story uh by chuck williams who also produced the sonic live action film yeah, some le- some legitimacy behind this. Hopefully, this is not able to fool anything. I mean, it's August. They're He's... like four months late if they think it's still April Fools. But when I read that, I'm like, they're 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 they're, they're not kidding. I I do have about it. This. I do have it under good authority though that uh, Pac Man will be voiced by Chris Pratt. <laughs> He's so cool. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well. So I don't know. Hey, since we're talking about all these, you know, it's 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 kind of interesting that you know a, a lot of these games are now getting like anime adaptations, live you know action or 
these kind of uh i don't want i want to say live action but they're like 3d animation pixar mm -hmm. sort of like deal yeah. are there any jrpgs that you would like to see as a movie or a series Derek? no 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 probably. i mean jrpgs like okay so i saw um, a, a, okay anything anime series live action oh. 3d animation anything anything okay. else yeah okay anything. it okay. doesn't have to be live action yeah. okay because when you said movie uh that, that's what my mind went to is like there's mm. no rpg that i've ever played that could be played out in a single movie dragon mm -hmm. quest 5 your story really uh right? they, they took some liberties uh yeah. to, to tie a bow on it and it was not mm -hmm. awful but i didn't love it <laughs> Um, yeah. so I wouldn't ever want to see a movie of a mm -hmm. Japanese RPG. Um, mm -hmm. gosh, but, uh, but for like a, oh, I, I would have to be really dumb to not say like, I would totally watch a TV series an animated, uh, anime, if you will, of maybe mm -hmm. earthbound or something, maybe mm. especially if Shigesato Itoi was involved in its production. I mean, interesting. I could totally see him doing something like that. He works in television, you know, mm -hmm. it's almost a surprise that it hasn't already happened. Um, and I, I feel like Earthbound itself would probably lend itself pretty well to sort of things like that. Interesting. Interesting. I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a great idea, but I just personally want to say, I want to see Yoko Taro work on a movie. He, look, this man okay. did games, but he also did like a series of like stage plays. Yeah. So I, I, I think if you give him the funding, he would make like a crazy movie series. Like I can definitely see Yoko Taro just doing something crazy with that. And, and I want to see what kind of, you know insanity what kind of genius he can bring to like this medium like is hmm. it just limited to games but like i've heard the i have never seen the stage play, but i've heard it was actually pretty good uh all things considered so i would really like to see not as a game series but i just want to see yoko Taro work on something related yeah so uh open question to all of you guys uh what kind of live series anime movie you name it just like don't don't think just live action like any kind of you know these kind of like series movie medium uh would you like to see from a grpg let yeah. us know in the comments that'll be our side question of the day so yeah throw out your answers and we'll review them and we'll pick some good ones to to highlight in next yes. week's episode let's talk of about it hit point um so now uh we have a little bit of some interesting news here that yeah. Baku, we almost missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Baku, it came down to the wire. It's like, hey, Baku, did you, you had a, you had a headline here, but nothing filled in. He's like, oh, and he's like furiously <laughs> typing things out for like the last 10 minutes leading into this episode. So yeah. What and, you got okay, here, Baku? And, and only because, uh, only because I, I, I kept finding this one article but i was looking for another article but that article was in japanese so it took me a, a little bit to find so uh back to the headline apparently yoshi p thinks final fantasy is struggling let's talk about that for a second so uh and and i'm sure some of you guys have already read it but in an interview with inverse um yoshi p says final fantasy as a franchise is struggling quote in terms of whether Final Fantasy is successfully adapting uh, to industry trends, I believe the series is currently struggling. Whew. We're now at a point where we receive a wide variety of requests regarding the direction of our game design. Truth. And to be honest, it's, it'd be impossible to satisfy all those requests with a single title. My uh -huh. current impression is that all we can really do is create multiple games and can you create the best that we can at any given time which is about as great of yeah. an answer i could ever hope for from a, a director on, yes. on a title like this i think we talked about this right derek like there there are like like what what, what does final fantasy mean to you like what there, mix a final fantasy game yeah, there is as is. many <laughs> definitions of final fantasy as there are fans like yeah i mean there I would consider myself a Final Fantasy fan, though I haven't been a fan of any of them since 10. Yeah. 
and and, I mean, and i think uh yeah i mean he he had a definition was was actually kind of funny like mm-hmm. it, he's like yeah if you ask me what a fond fantasy is it's like great music great story with with chocobo summons and you know and, and the likes like it, it, I, and i think he just threw like a pretty generic answer but and i think he also generic yeah and, and and i think he's he he didn't mean it like verbatim i think he said it in 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 a kind of um what's the what's the word like uh like in in a in a parody kind of parody kind of way i don't oh. know not parody like kind of an ironic kind of way right because uh-huh. like uh obviously that's not like an exact answer but you know it is just that vague you know like what really is the final fantasy is well as chocobo and summons and yeah i think he's kind of being a little funny but at the same time like seriously it's like what absolutely true yeah i mean sometimes uh, sometimes sardonic humor is is the best way to tell the truth you know yeah and that's exactly what he's doing here because he's gotten himself into hot water by being a little too forward at times about other things right yeah so, absolutely yeah so by coding um, it in a layer of humor maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> He'll, you know, avoid the wrath of of the CEO. But honestly, I feel like Yoshi P at this point, like with an answer like that, he knows more about Square Enix and its fans than anybody else that I've heard anything from the top of Square Enix in a while. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and I think you know that's that's probably the right direction anyway for Final Fantasy. Uh, and um, he's given further uh, comments, uh, mm-hmm. and this is the reason why it took me so long, because I couldn't okay. find this article. So, further commenting on the direction of the franchise in a separate interview with the Japanese site Comic Days, uh, which, by the way, this is part of the reason why I like Yoshi P so much, because he actually goes out and talks to a publication, yeah. where I'm just, like, looking forward to any of these directors for, like, I don't know, Tactics Ogre, Valkyrie Elysium, Forspoken, um, Dial's Field, just any of these guys. Like, I'm just like, can you guys please go talk to the, um, you know, publication? Tell me what you guys are working on. Tell me your philosophy. Yeah. Like, anything, anything. But, like, they don't really do that. Yoshi P does. So, talking to Comic Days, um, Yoshi to uh, further elaborate on the switch to action based battle because that's the really contentious point that a lot mm-hmm. of people are pointing to. He says that he explains that he he realizes the game's uh, switch to action-based combat is not going to sit well with players uh, more used to traditional turn-based combat. Um, We want the world, quote, uh, especially the younger generation, to play the game, Yoshida said, claiming that many players in their late teens and late 20s have heard of Final Fantasy series but never played it. They just, like, wouldn't even give it a chance. Right. Yeah. So in order to entice a younger generation to get into the game, um, he, Yoshi, Yoshi P thinks that this is the way of the reality based on their research, based on their, you know, based on their market research, based on their uh, yeah. polls, based on all the things that they've looked into. This is how we can get the younger generation into this series. That's just where the trend is leading. Uh, and it's really hard to argue against it. Now, I, I, I get it, right? Like, oh, well, we want this to be tradition. Um, and, and I think there's always that debate for anything that, you know, goes on for multiple, uh, for when, when it survives long enough, um, anything, not even just games, anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some point, you're going to find a group of traditionalists and you're going to find people who don't really care for whatever that is. You can yeah. either let it die or you can adapt. And I think Yoshida is choosing adaptation to keep this franchise going. I mean, I feel uh, like I'm, that's the, the role of the business is is obviously yeah. not to let the business go under or something like that. It's just, yeah. it is unfortunate. And, and I don't think it's necessarily because of the turn-based mechanisms that, that people were not playing them before. I mm. mean, the, when was the last traditional turn-based Final Fantasy game? When was the last one? Uh, 13. And 13. that was what? 2007? <laughs> that was PS3. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So 13, it's like 13. Definitely 13. Yeah. Well, I guess I the various something. 13s, which went on through how, how yeah, all know. three of them, I think, were turn based. So, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and people probably might not have played 13, but not because it was turn based. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, turn-based. I mean, they had yeah. some other problems besides. There were other issues. Yeah, 
I mean, they haven't made a truly great, like universally lauded uh, turn-based RPG in the Final Fantasy series since 10? Which yeah, was with 2003-ish? Yeah. It's been like 20 years. I mean... It's been a while. I mean, I I don't know. Maybe maybe people uh, aren't playing turn-based because they haven't made turn-based Final Fantasy good in a long time. Just that, throwing that, that out is, there. That is No, that is also true. And you know what? Just before anyone says anything, because they're they're totally going to look at this and say, oh, Baku hates turn-based games. We uh, watch the other episodes, okay? Like we uh, absolutely adore turn-based uh, RPG. Baku, why do you hate America? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Why do you hate people? Why do you hate Just JRPGs, why, why, Baku? Why do you hate with, JRPGs? With JRPGs in your name? <laughs> yeah, no, because because we've defended uh, titles such as, um, in fact, in fact, speaking on action versus turn-based. I've been a staunch defender of um of like a dragon, which is a uh, oh, yeah. Yakuza. which is kind of the opposite. They've done mm -hmm. the opposite, right? They've taken sure. the action uh, formula and people were up at arm and they were basically yelling the opposite thing, which is I, I find that hilarious. Like I'm just like one of these days, I just want old school Final Fantasy fans meet old school Yakuza fans because you guys are yelling like the opposite things, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, it is now a turn-based game. The newest title for Yakuza is a turn-based title and people loved it, right? It yeah. was great. I played it. I found flaws, but I found it generally good. Okay, Persona 5, turn-based, made a splash. Uh, Devil, I mean, not Devil's Stone, um, Soul Hacker, turn-based. Uh, people are just lining up to get this thing. Turn-based definitely has a future. In fact, a, yeah. a very bright future, if you ask me, like the golden age of JRPG again that we sort of talk about, like, you know, it's sort of coming back, right? Yeah. So turn-based is here to stay. But that also doesn't mean that Final Fantasy had to stay on that track to yeah. be, you know, to to survive or to, um, you know, to, to meet the demands of the next generation of gamers coming up so i and mean to be fair yeah final fantasy has been moving away from like the traditional turn-based system since it started like i mean ever since they introduced like atb like they've been dabbling with real-time elements so it kind of makes sense that they would continue to evolve in that direction to be totally honest you know so i don't know just because there is a future in turn-based rpgs yeah. doesn't mean that Final Fantasy has to be it. It just sucks. I think mostly that the game that was previously turn-based, Final Fantasy VII, mm -hmm. is now being remade with exclusively action. And yeah. and I think that's what people are really stung most over at this point. I don't mm -hmm. think anybody cares if if fifteen is action or not. I mean, at this point, I, I don't well, think 16. anybody sixteen. Sorry, yeah, um, fifteen is definitely action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, see, that's yeah. how far behind I am. Um, oh geez yeah so anyways yeah. yeah well you know everyone should just be like you know the solution is everyone should just be like falcom yeah everybody be like falcom make the yeah have have an action title that's like your flagship action title and then have your flagship like turn-based title well that but that it, is it, square enix with dragon quest and uh and final fantasy now well but but didn't didn't hold on i, I see i don't know this okay because i haven't seen the gameplay to a voice spoiler but didn't didn't like the new trails game actually added like action elements in i don't like, know i could have sworn i think uh so. in kudo like sounds, in sounds kudo. familiar i haven't seen it yeah so it's just hmm i'm, I'm avoiding spoilers too so i, yeah, I can't say too. that that that's about as much as i read <laughs> into it like nothing about stories nothing about worldview anything just i've nope. just heard that there's some action element in the gameplay uh, but no, I, I think this is still, the, I, I honestly think the, the jury's still up. The game could completely flop and he does not know what he's talking about. Action is crap. I it could know. be. In Yoshi it, P, it I be. trust. In Yoshi P, I trust. That should be our national model from now on. Um, yeah, and, and I'm just saying, it could be absolute garbage when it comes out. We're, we're not saying this is going to be great, but... What I would urge people is just just give it a shot. It's the same thing I said about like a drain. Just give it a shot. Like mm -hmm. before you go, like ah, this is not action. Ah, just just give yeah. it a shot. Give it a shot. Play it. See if you like it. Be open mind. And if you really don't like it, if it's still bad for you, 
cool then right like you yeah. tried it yeah then rage but sure. yeah don't 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 scream like murder without even seeing the thing that's what i would say so and obviously this game hasn't been out yet so just please give it a, a, a let let it come out first all right, so let's dive into some merch drops, and then we'll wrap up with some of these uh, uh, messages that we've been getting. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I think you're gonna love this merch drop here, and this and this slick. Uh, oh yeah, I can already tell this looks incredible. Mm -hmm. All oh. right, this is definitely something you'll buy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, am I am I talking about this? I I may as well, I guess. Oh no, I, I, I go go ahead, please, please. Oh okay, okay. Yes. Uh, so, um. Guys and, and gals, if uh, if you're feeling like your drip is just a little dry, <laughs> and you need some some ice to cool it down, mm -hmm. Sonic has you covered in diamonds. In a yeah. collection with the jewelry maker King Ice, Sega is releasing five or diamond. Oh, five. Uh, what, sorry, oh, that's five more. That's five, five more. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Five more diamond. Yes. I was gonna say five or dang. Okay, five, five more, more yeah. diamond mm -hmm. necklaces. This time it's supersonic, Amy, Dr. Eggman, and neutral chow and dark chow. You wanna... Yeah, so we don't have a trailer for we don't have a, like a video for these new characters, but you can see the previous uh video, which is what this is, and you can get an idea of what, what we we're looking at. So yeah, let's take a look. All right. What? <laughs> oh, look at that bling. Look at all those bling. Look at that Sega. Oh my God. My wow. mother-in-law would wear the crap out of these. <laughs> oh my God. These what look like these made for. These look like the worst keychains. <laughs> Who are they made for? Who are they made for? It's an actual, I think, I'm not even sure if it's an actual gold chain, but like a hundred. I doubt it because a hundred and fifty dollars. These, yeah. one of these can be yours for a hundred and fifty bones. That's American yeah. doll hairs. So, um, yeah, if you, if you just got to be a little frostier, you know, if you, if you want to look, if you want to look a little more, a little more bling when you're chilling down on uh, chowing down on chili dogs, uh, especially you, if you got you options. Are, uh, just, just if, saying. If, if you're an aspiring rapper, <laughs> were these? I mean, if if I was, uh, yeah. yeah. If you're an yeah. aspiring rapper, not a successful one, because if that you were a successful one, you'd have better ice. But that's, I mean, that's not. I, I don't know who that's for. Some, I don't know who that's for. Some high schooler <laughs> kid is going to have the whole collection. <laughs> He's going to pick up a part-time job just for it. Yeah, I look. And then he's going to lose one like... on the on this bus when the chain breaks or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, who? You you have to be a Sonic fan. Yeah, you have to afford a hundred and fifty dollars. But the hard part is finding to... a Sonic fan. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Apologize to all the Sonic <laughs> fans in chat right now. <laughs> hey, do we have any Sonic fans? Sega here? makes it hard, okay? Uh, Sega I, makes it hard. Do you have any Sonic fan right now to defend Sonic's honor? Come on. I know you're here. He has some pretty good here. movies. <laughs> <laughs> he has some great movies, apparently. A hundred, what is that? How many, how many, how many million? A uh, hundred and sixty-two million is nothing to scope at, right? But yeah. Just, I don't think any of those fans are paying $150 for these necklaces, though. It's just, oh, jeez. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, the Mario equivalent of just, like, a mushroom with, like, just, like, blinged out? Actually, I, I think that would actually look a little cooler. <laughs> just, <laughs> hmm, I don't know. What do y'all think? Hey, uh, so, <sighs> so somebody in chat says, Sonic has amazing shakes. <laughs> uh, I, I will give credit where credit is due. Uh, I've only been to Sonic the Fast Food Place once. By the way, for any anyone who does not live in the East Coast, I don't know if Sonic's. I think only it's like East a Midwest Coast thing. thing. It's a Midwest thing, yeah. Uh, so anyone who does not know what that is, Sonic is actually a fast food joint uh, around us too. And I've only been to it twice ever because it's did, kind of a drive. But did they, they get they, your? They got, they got did, good stuff. Did they get your order right? They have gotten my orders right every time. Have they not gotten your orders right? Every time they do something wrong. 
<laughs> it's kind of like a joke between Amy and I at this point. It's oh, like, John. Yeah, it's it's funny. I, I, I'm not even mad. I mean, it's tasty whatever I get, but it's like a, it's just Yo. spin the roulette wheel. Yeah. Did, did was it chili dogs? I, I think they oh yeah, the extra dogs. long cheese no. conies. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like yummy. So, anyways, uh, right. yeah. So Sonic necklaces. That's that's how you do that. Yes. One hundred and fifty. Hashtag not sponsored by Sega. Not sponsored <laughs> at all. Oh man. <laughs> all right. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> from okay so we got a couple of merch messages that we got or not merch messages i've been watching way too much uh <laughs> uh linus tech tips uh so for super chats we got from naticus here he says how much Hello. does baku's tears cost on the merch page uh yes so i am releasing a line of uh baku tears called oji san tears uh that that's going to come out in little <laughs> jars then they're going to be now uh, i i'm thinking to introductory price is going to be 15 dollars per bottle uh i expect no one buying them but i'm going to keep making them all right well i i will <laughs> say that anybody who uh catches baku during a live stream he you can make him cry for a lot less he has this uh <laughs> redemption uh that you can have him eat some spicy noodles and uh and they are i removed it you removed it i removed it <laughs> oh man it was okay, limited after, run after after vomiting one time not over the noodles oh the no noodles would never do it to me no yeah. it was it was uh I, I was doing a fundraising thing right oh yeah and yeah I, yeah yeah and i had one too many of these like deaf nuts oh, uh no. and and yeah my stomach like turned i was like well i've never had that happen before wow. uh and then i i went to the bathroom which is right next to the streaming room and i was vomiting so loud that like the mic picked it up oh no and i thought that no one could hear me <laughs> no. and it came back like we just went on no one talked about it until after the stream, I was like, oh my God, guys, that was so embarrassing. You might not know this, but I was vomiting in the next room. They're like, yeah, we know. We heard you. Like, you heard me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, the noodles doesn't oh. get me. The noodles, the noodles, I eat those noodles for lunch. Those are nothing. No, it yeah. was the it was the deaf nuts that got me uh, after eating a couple of those. Yeah, it was bad. Man. All right. Well, that yeah. was a fun little story I didn't expect. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, another super chat here who came from Francisco L who says, uh, couldn't hey. send a voicemail. So here's a question. Which RPG battle theme do you love and which one do you hate? Loved the Parasite Eve and hated the Persona 3 one. Persona 3. Oh, God. Oh, oh Persona 3. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. I'm with you. Yeah, Parasite Eve was nice. Do you remember the Parasite Eve uh, no, theme? Not really. Uh. No, it, it's kind of um, I don't know how to explain it. It's got like, uh, I don't know. Like I, I wish you could just like play a clip of it really quick. And no, I can look it up like here. Yeah, uh, but, but uh, while you do that, yeah, yeah uh, Parasite Eve definitely really good. Um, it's got this like minimalistic like I don't know, feel to it. I don't know. It feels kind of modern, which makes sense given the setting of the game. Um, um, it's, uh, but but yeah, just that baby 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 theme. Just like God, shoot mm -hmm. me! I, I hated Persona Three. Okay, so I'm playing the this. I'm playing it now. I don't I don't know if you can hear it. Not probably not. I hear it. I hear it. Okay. It's cutting in and out. Oh, it's because it's really quiet. So I think Discord's oh, okay. kind of killing it. But um, yeah, that sounds really nice. Yeah, I don't know how to, I, I like, I'm, I'm not like, a, I, I just appreciate music. I don't know how to explain it. So sure. I apologize. I never say, but like when I hear it, it just feels very modern. Uh, that's how I would describe it. And it just feels really good. That progression yeah. feels really good. Right? Kind of reminds me and of it's the not bouncer. Overwhelming. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> It's around the same age, so yeah. I mean, it it could even be like the same composer, composer, maybe. Yeah, could be. be. Yeah. Um, Mass so, destruction is terrible. You take it back, Michael. <laughs> you know it's bad. You know it's bad. P four is <laughs> way better. Which, by the way, I'm streaming P four right now. P four is way better. I'm grooving to P four. Like every stream, I look forward to the music. P three was just like ah. No, I'm P3 sorry. was awesome. I, I liked it a lot. <laughs> so, um, and also, since we're going to do music here, uh, listen mm -hmm. to, I think this one is, uh, let's see, 
uh, God, what was it called? Battle for. I just want to remind everyone that music is highly subjective. So please don't get mad at me for saying I don't like P3. Uh, Here's. I just, I just don't like P3. <laughs> so here is a. Uh, from Persona 3, a battle theme that I really enjoyed. And it was called The Battle for Everyone's Souls. And hmm. it's a boss fight theme from like towards the end of the game. Uh, okay. But it just has some of the most like intense. Oh, here, I'll, I'll skip ahead to, to like the, the good part. Because I, I used it at the towards the intro of, of my Persona 3 review oh and it's just okay like, i see you yeah i i can definitely hear like similarities like in that um in that persona oh there it is yep yeah this was an incredible battle theme isn't that uh, just basically the remix of the velvet room though yeah yeah it's oh? it's called battle for everyone's souls the the velvet room's theme is called poem for everyone's souls or, or requiem oh. i think um so yeah battle for everyone's souls is the battle that uses the same theme and i love it mm. yeah and, no, uh, that sounds amazing it's got some really awesome guitar riffs later on it's a solid solid track um now one that i didn't care so much for uh and i think this is one that everybody kind of universally pans is the one from uh, chrono cross like it's not that it was bad um but chrono cross's battle theme uh just kind of grates on the nerves because it's got the violin and you know which one mm. i'm talking about right no, which one? Play. Let's, let's let's have a listen. All right, sure. Let's let's give it a, a listen here, real quick. Mm -hmm. I. It's not bad, but it's not really a battle oh, theme. I, I think. I actually really like this one. <laughs> you see how weird this is. I actually yeah. really like this one. I mean, music is uh, I, extremely subjective. I mean, I feel yeah. like, I mean, Mitsuda does a, a stellar job. It's not a bad song. It's mm. just not a great battle theme for me. Not a great battle theme. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it definitely has like some craziness going on. It sounds really busy. Like there, I mean, there's definitely like, it describes like a hectic kind of environment for sure. But, mm. uh, but yeah, it's, it's not, it's, it just doesn't seem like a battle to me. It just sounds like. A crazy circus. Well, I mean, given the theme, right? Uh, but you know what this reminds me of? Like, it reminds me of... I don't know why it reminds me of this, but it reminds me of, like, uh, like 90s, like, anime battles. Like, I don't know why. It, I don't know what about this reminds me of that. Like, kind of hmm. like Dragon Quest, like, anime uh, uh that that die anime from like oh the yeah, 90s. Yeah. yeah yeah like i don't know why it reminded me of that but like kind of like sorcery kind of battle i don't know why it, it, that's that's what it reminded me of i gotta like go down my memory lane and see like what about that course progression that reminds me of it what uh, is a, what is one that you dislike though do you recall any that you just can't that stand? I dislike yeah well, let's 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 talk about my favorite all-time okay. battle theme. Favorite all-time battle theme, hands down. Uh, no, even second close thing is uh, the final battle in Final Fantasy VI with Kafka. That okay. that climb is called um, Dancing Mad. That mm -hmm. entire it's like a like a five movement piece, which wow. is insane. And every movement goes uh, like along with the the boss that you're fighting the different and stage uh -huh. yeah and there's symbolisms to each of the movements it, it talks about like a, a a humble origin all the way into like ascending godhood which is basically the theme to kafka's um uh, uh you know character yeah so it's like he he made this final boss to like remind you of his like greatness and, and you will see him rise from the roots to, you know, ascending to godhood. And then he meets you at the very end. And it turns, it goes from this, like, beautiful orchestra mix to just, like, guitar riffs in the very end. 
which obviously is not conventional at all to be mixed into classical music. And it just completely throws you off. And that was like the final battle theme. When you finally see him, it turns into this crazy guitar, like, you know, uh, uh, you know, solo. Yeah. Um, so it was just phenomenal. People are throwing um, out so much uh, Falcom music, by the way, right now. It is, it is trails, so good. trails, trails, trails. But not just I, I trails, because East is incredible as well. Oh, Falcom East, is, yeah. Oh, masterful. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I love, I, I love East music, um, in general. Yeah, but I mean, if you have to have me pick one song, that's gonna be the one. But yeah, no, I think East, like East Origin. I still listen to like the East Origin like CD in my car. So yeah, uh, definitely that. Uh, I, I do prefer East music over Trails. I'm sorry, Trails fan. I, I like East music better. I mean, uh, I don't know what East it music is goes either. a little harder, at least than the yeah, I don't. Like, it just, yeah, I don't. They know. do way more like hard, like like guitars and you know. Is it because it's more action oriented? They they want to make Probably. it more like you know, like a little more pumping? visceral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I, I like Trails music just fine, but I, I am definitely a bigger East music fan, and, and again, I have no idea why, but I think you might have just told me why. As far as like what I don't like, yeah, I can't really think of anything. It's, it's head. really hard because the, uh, the really bad ones are just <gasps> forgettable. No, I remember what I hate. Oh my god, I, I just remembered. Okay. Um, I hate it. Uh, uh, Saga Frontier Two, battle theme hated it and throughout the entire game there are multiple rendition of that song through like the different time period and they this all this suck yes and they just all suck all every single rendition sucked and it was just <laughs> like just end my misery just please stop playing the stupid song <laughs> i don't know why i hate the song so much <laughs> oh man so I, I, you know, I, should... I think it was just no, I, I think it's especially bad because like they'll change the battle theme, but like I don't understand why they changed it. Like it's like not like oh well, this character you get this theme, this yeah. character you get this theme. There's it's just like, no I don't know. I, rhyme or yeah, reason to like, it. Yeah, it's random. They're like oh, we're just gonna change it because it's like why the, the heck? Like why did you change it? But they all sucked, so it didn't matter. <laughs> it was just all torture all the time. Oh man, and the so, battle sucked. So, so whatever. Chat, I hate the game. <laughs> if if chat can throw out some bad battle themes, I'd like to. I'd like to. I wonder what the worst battle theme is. I want to hear that too. Like your your, your best and worst. Give me your best and worst. Yeah, that, I, that's I just want to see the worst. Two. I mean, the best. You is just like, want to see the worst. Because I mean, the best is going to be a bunch of Falcom stuff. I want to see the worst. What what's the worst you got here, chat? I'm gonna the draw best, on the not Falcom. Communal Let's make knowledge. It difficult. I see Chrono Cross. Go away. <laughs> Chrono Cross already up there. Yeah, I already threw that out there for mine, uh, Tarvold. But uh, but yeah, let's see what else. What else do we got? <laughs> I mean, Chrono Trigger was actually pretty good too. Like, Chrono Trigger was general. incredible. The entire soundtrack was just. Uh, I, I I couldn't fault any of the pieces in there. Just, they're all phenomenal. Uh, oh, hmm. I, I'm yeah. I'm looking back through my games and stuff, and it's it's hard to to pick one out that is like, yeah, I didn't enjoy that music. Xenoblade one and two music are also phenomenal. Uh, Tornet was good. Uh, the Future Connected were good. Like it's just they all they're all good. I still listen to them in my car. Um, yeah, I, I actually liked a lot of Xenoblade two battle themes too. Mm. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, I can't think of anything else. I, I keep I can think of a lot of things I like, but yeah. That can be our second uh, side question for everybody. Uh, if, if you're watching after the fact, feel free to throw that into the to the comments so we can uh, read those out next time. But I think yeah. that surprisingly, this was not a three hour long episode. Really? Wait, how it's, long was it? It's only been about two hours and 20 minutes, which is wow. admittedly about, you know, 40 minutes longer than the last few. So, you know, it's definitely yeah, a longer Yeah, but you round. know, this is, yeah. You know, yeah, not, not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to give it a like on whatever platform you are enjoying it upon, uh, whether that be here at YouTube or uh, elsewise on, on iTunes or whatever. You know, review it if you liked it. Uh, and otherwise, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening uh, and a great rest of your week. Baku san JRPG. Uh, have you got any closing thoughts? surprisingly no i'm just thinking about those music let us know what you like and don't like yeah i, I really want to see it yeah got music on the brain it. now 
All right, yeah. guys. Have a great rest of your night. Take care, everybody. Take care.